Red Hot Comic Book Movie News. Defenders of the Earth. Defenders. The Weekly Planet. The Weekly Planet. Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of The Weekly Planet, where we talk movies and comics and TV shows. My name is James, also known as Mr. Sunday. With me as always, that's my co-host, Nick Mason. Top of the morning to you, James. Why do you say such a thing? What's well, the morning. Yeah, well, we're recording it is. in the morning. It's true. And of course, there's a plenty of Irish news, obviously. <laughs> so much Irish we're, news. We're going to be talking about that Irish actor, Leonardo DiCaprio, <laughs> as you might imagine. So, Yeah, absolutely. We're going to be talking about all of those things. Uh, just a, a quick and brief and insincere up, apology up top, Mason. <laughs> okay, right. Uh, this is a little bit late this weekend, mm. including for those at BigSandwich.co. I've been sick over the weekend. You had bad diarrhea. No, Mason. He, keep, he keeps saying I've got bad diarrhea, but I had zero diarrhea. We, like, I'm looking at a text chain. <laughs> here between you and me and there's a lot of talk of bad diarrhea and you having bad diarrhea so i don't know i'm I not have, making this up i would if i had bad diarrhea i would say i had bad You'd diarrhea. Be out and proud. <laughs> yeah that's right but i didn't mason okay, all right i had a regular so do you want the, flu do you want the t-shirt to say i don't have bad diarrhea or do you want it to say i've got bad diarrhea and i'm proud of it i want it and it's your face if i it. had bad diarrhea <laughs> right. I would be, be proud, proud of it. it. Okay, that's a great T-shirt. I like that. Okay. <laughs> tpublic.com. Search for the Weekly Planet. That one will be up. Uh, so I appreciate your patience and also the people who uh, sent kind words and said, hope you feel better. What about the people that said mean things? Then I, I, You know what? To all my haters out there, fucking <laughs> get in the grave. I'll kill you. I'm not sick enough to cave your fucking head in with a shovel. You don't think I will? You sure you're drinking a herbal tea there? <laughs> Oh, but you do have a shovel in your other hand. So, okay, all right. Mm, absolutely do. Uh, no, thank you to everybody. Appreciate it. Good funs, good fun times mm, all around. Yeah, uh, thanks to the haters. Yeah. You know, we need somebody to dab on, don't we? That's right, exactly. We oh. need someone to dab on and do big kisses at. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. We don't have any haters. I don't know. We don't say anything controversial enough to. We got haters. Hate. Don't worry about it. Yeah, I mean, we've got some. It's more just like. Uh, uh, this movie's good, actually. Or uh, I can't believe you like this movie, etc. Yeah, 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 and it, yeah, yeah. it's that. Mm. Yeah. Well, we do and we don't. <laughs> uh, big news this week, Mason. In addition mm. to talking about Fast X, uh, Collings, who edits this, who put the time codes in below. If you just want to skip to all the Fast X action. Mm, that's right. Uh, but or you want to talk about Jake Extraction. Oh, yeah. You, you some, could get that. Well, that's that. right. We could talk about that because we are doing trailers. We're going to talk trailers for a couple of things, including Killers of the Flower Moon, mm. Jake Extraction 2. What was the other trailer? The Creator. The Creator. And the Mission Impossible one, that's in there also. (laughs) More delays due to the writer's strike. Mm. Uh, Some dates on some upcoming Marvel TV series. Uh, A bunch of shows are leaving Disney Plus and Hulu. Mm. Unless you put the pressure on and then sometimes they... uh... They, they go, uh, all right, we'll give you these We'll give this one, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, this would be a hate crime if we took this off, actually, <laughs> to be honest. So we'll probably leave this one, actually. Uh, we got first reviews are in for Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. Okay. And the, the, best, the best thing I can say is it got a five-minute standing ovation. That's, mm. a, that's great. Which is apparently a crushing <laughs> defeat in the world of, of can. <laughs> uh, which is wild. I mean, I'm sure we've talked about this before. Yeah. But there is no movie in the world where I'd be more than – 30 seconds. It's too long. Even 30 seconds is too long because that, at that point you're looking around yeah. and you're like, is, why is everybody else still clapping? It's like when people sing you happy birthday. It's like, what do you do? You know? Mm, yeah, yeah. But it's five minutes. Mm, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. And after you finish clapping. In, in this scenario, I'm the one being clapped at for five minutes. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then after, in, you know, in, in Cannes and they've, everybody's clapped for 19 minutes, somebody's just like, and many more. <laughs> Oh, he's a joke. <laughs> um, and then we're going to talk about why did he make Indiana Jones 5? Why did he make it at all? For money, Mason. You make it for money. Now, I want to be clear, though. Yeah. I have never dampened your enthusiasm for Indiana Jones. <laughs> yeah, five. yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you, Just like you never accused me of having severe diarrhea when I did it. <laughs> it's true. Your words don't mean anything, Mason. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, we've gotten through this entire. Uh, uh, sorted uh, ordeal and soiled ordeal, <laughs> and and I never once have, but it's it's just all the reviews what done it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but yeah. Some some one of us is certainly enjoying it more than the other. I'll tell you that much. Basically, I'm not enjoying it. I would love Indiana Jones Jones Five to be good, and <laughs> yeah. it still might be good. It, is it even a movie that you go to can and people go, "Good work"? Maybe, and they'd be like, "Oh, I bet people would be eating their popped corns for this." <laughs> Yuck! Yuck! <laughs> And then we're also going to talk about the uh, the CW era of superheroes and how it's 
pretty much over mm. and what they're pivoting towards. Oh, no. I think it's good. Is it reality TV? Is it more reality <laughs> TV? It's it's like that but a little bit worse. Oh, no. <laughs> AI designed reality TV? Not that bad. Okay, all right. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm excited to hear about it. Do you think – have there been movies that have been booed at Cannes, do you think? Must be, right? Yeah, I think people walk out every now and then. Probably like a Lars von Trier or yeah. a, like one of those guys doing, yeah. a, doing a real gross movie. Doing I a bet gross some thing. people are like, boo, no. Boo. Too gross. Too gross. <laughs> <laughs> Too gross. That's me. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Mason, delays but okays. Yeah, Remember, sure, because sure, sure. We're in the era of this writer's strike. That's right. It's okay to be like, hey, some things are going to be delayed so people get paid. Actual money for oh, the Oh, things being delayed so people get paid. Exactly. I like that. I like that. That's a good one. Uh, there was a bunch of things announced this week, but I guess the things like most relevant to this popular uh, podcast is the um, the Mandalorian <laughs> Season 4. Oh, yes. And the Penguin have ceased production. Oh, yeah, productions. of course. Right. That so, yeah, sense. there you go. Big sci-fi and comic book properties grinding to a halt. And who's to blame for this, Mason? Um, the writers get yeah, back to right. work. That's right. <laughs> That's right. Oh, and in uh, more normal news, uh, David Zaslav being a normal guy, the CEO of Warner Brothers, he um, he was very normal this week. He went to a, a Boston University commencement. He, he he did a Boston University commencement event, uh, and uh, people booed him. Yeah, I don't think that's funny. Was it because he was wearing sunglasses? He was probably because he was wearing sunglasses <laughs> and talking about content. I imagine. Yeah, that's yeah. super cool. Mm. Yeah, I think he's normal, and I think. We can't stress that enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we, think think we think it's a normal, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. 22 minutes of, of speech he had. Um, mm. I do enjoy how most people this time around, I think it was different last time, have now like come around on the idea that, well, the, yeah, this will be stopped if you just pay people properly. It's mm. not like, well, the writers are holding things yeah, up. Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. well, no, this is this could be resolved if you pay yeah, people yeah. their actual worth. Apparently a plane circled overhead with a message, David Zaslav, pay your writers during the speech. <laughs> my God. Anyway, he's just blah 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 you know. Uh, he's like, I could work with you, you all one yeah, day. Yeah, that's or right. I remember to follow your dreams and bloody, bloody, the journey of life's very important and blah 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 blah. Why is it? That's a great point. Mm. Wish I was there. It's gonna, life's going to enrich you. Don't even worry about it. You know what's going to enrich you as well? Getting paid probably by the studio. Well, yeah. that and just being David Zaslav and getting like $100 million plus a year. That's true. For doing his job mm. badly, <laughs> I want to say. I mean, from a, from a certain point of view. Yeah, guys, I guess, yeah. From, from the point of view of people who like to enjoy, you know, media and, and, and yeah, yeah. Well, I don't, I, don't I, I just. Yeah, I, I don't know. I'm indifferent at this point, honestly. Yeah, I just consume things and I move to the next thing. Mm. So, I, so I enjoy media, Mason. That's so right. I enjoy content. Speaking of content. Oh, yes, I'm listening. We've got a season two release date for Loki, and it is going to be uh, in October of 2023. Mm. It's going to be weekly. Very now, nice. you might be like, well, what's unusual about that? All the Marvel shows are weekly. Great point. Yeah. <laughs> but <laughs> I wouldn't have said that, though, because I didn't remember that. Well, you know, well, the reason I brought it up, though, is because Echo. Oh, yeah, right. Which was releasing after Loki finishes on November yeah, yeah. 29th. That's going to, all going to come out in the one. It's going to come out all at once. Mm. And for those people who don't remember, Echo is a new character. No, is it new? New to comics? No, she's been around in comics for for some years. Okay, but was introduced uh, in the MCU in in Hawkeye. In Hawkeye, that's yes, right. That's so right. So primarily a a initially a Daredevil sort of love interest slash villain mm. who is. Like Daredevil is blind, she is deaf, but yes. she, she compensates in other ways. That's right, she's exactly. A cool fighting type. That's right. She's a fighting type Pokemon. I, I, yeah, I enjoyed that character, but, but people are speculating, mm-hmm. and there has been rumours that the reason they're maybe dumping these all at once oh, yes. is so is because it's not great. Right, and apparently okay. it's gone back for a number of reshoots. That's some more rumours okay, that have been right. out there. And that this way it's just kind of done and it's right. out there, as yeah. opposed to people week to week going, this is Bad. <laughs> sure, well, maybe. And then it stretched out over six to eight weeks. It could it's just still bad. It could just be trying a new method. But yeah. I, but I, I don't know. I don't think on the surface looking at this, I don't think this is a yeah. good thing. That also, they're... I mean, you can't rule out because they'll try anything. You can't rule out, hey, what if we put out one series week to week and we won out everything at once? Just as so people have Absolutely. something. So some people, they might be like, well, some people like to watch things week to week and some people like to binge the whole season. So let's do both and see what happens. Mm. That's It's possible. Exactly. But I don't know if it's likely. Yeah. But there you go. We'll find out on November 29th when mm. me and you will be watching every episode at double the speed. That's right. To get through it, to move on to the next piece of content. 
Mason. <laughs> Don't you think? I do think that. There was a new trailer just as I was coming in. Uh, there was a new trailer for Secret Invasion. But if you oh, haven't there? seen it, uh, it's about the same as the last one. Oh, okay. It's like, why don't you bring in the the Avengers? And he's like, well, this is something I've got to do myself. I mean, bringing in even one of the Avengers would make this way easier. <laughs> but uh, just, I mean, I've, I've, per- I've got to use this little gun. Yeah. And I've got to do it that way. Why doesn't he say, like, because I can't trust anybody? It's a good point. Does he say that? No, he says I've got to do it I myself. trust everybody, but I still want to do this <laughs> myself. I've learned to trust everybody. <laughs> That's right. I've had a character arc. Thanks for noticing <laughs> over, like, ten years. I have. Anyway. <laughs> and I had a haircut. Didn't notice that either, did you? <laughs> hey. But anyway, I've got my little gun and I'm going to go into this and I'm going to fight all these scrolls Who I trust. I trust them also. <laughs> I trust them to be worthy and honourable opponents. Well, people are comparing this to the Winter Soldier. Yeah, that's true, they are. Which is what you want to say. <laughs> <laughs> they're, saying, they're saying this is the best espionage-themed MCU movie-slash-series since the Winter Soldier is what, what they're, they're saying. saying. That's what they're and saying. And people are like, I mean, they're probably right. Yeah. This is good or not, it's probably going to be right. <laughs> oh, my goodness, absolutely. When's that out anyway? Is it this year or is it next yeah, year? It is this year, I think. Yeah, it's quite soon. Oh, yeah, so it's before Loki, right? Mm. Interesting then that there's no Loki oh, June trailer. 21st. Yeah, well, I think they're I think they're still... Um, Scrambling to chop bits out? Well, that and they they recently... Well, they the press kit thing that they released recently didn't have any mention of Jonathan Majors or Kang in it mm. and they showed a trailer to, like, investors or something at a whatever. I don't know. Oh, yeah, yeah, You know yeah. where they show a thing to somebody and we're yes, not there? Yes, David Zaslav is there. <laughs> yeah, that's but right. But we're not there. And he, Kang uh, and Jonathan Majors are not in that either. Mm. So I think, yeah, they're probably waiting to make any kind of official announcement. Mm. But it seems as if they're very much mm. like, let's, yeah. <laughs> let's kind of pair this back there, as There is a new Avengers series that came out quite recently and I saw some preview pages for that Yeah, and Kang is in it but he doesn't look anything like Jonathan Majors. No. Which, and I, I don't know if they've had time to implement changes mm. but I feel like. Jonathan Majors changes. That's right. I feel, I kind of feel like if that if this would be the moment if they're like we're, we're yeah. you know, because they often make changes relating to the stuff that happens in the movies and series and what have you. The way the Black Adam looks exactly like Dwayne the Rock Johnson. That one panel and then never again. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> But this would be the moment where they'd be like, we're going to make this call. Yeah. And I think they were kind of like, mm, let's not though. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So we'll see how that plays out. Yes. Uh, but so there you go. Those are the things that are happening and whatever, whatever, whatever. Anyways, Mason. Go on. Shows that are leaving Disney Plus and Hulu. Mm. Now, there's a few things going on here because Bob Iger, your dad. Yes. Who's, a, who's also normal, has mm. a big normal plan Great, to save $3 billion in 2023. Mm. And it's by not paying people residuals. That's part of it, sure. Yeah. Mm. but there's it, And also not paying other things. <laughs> there was a three-pronged approach this week, which mm. we're going to get into. And one of them. A triple pronger. That's right. Wow. One of them is to remove 50-ish shows from Disney Plus and Hulu. That sounds like he said the number and then looked around and people, <laughs> and the, inv- the investors didn't care for it. And he's like, ish, 50 to 100? I don't know. Less? <laughs> he's turning the big dial that says destroying <laughs> artists' work left and right and looking for the investors and seeing what they say. Mm, uh, everything? Everything? Start again? Some of them are- All right, AI? Yeah. Here we go. Anyway, here's the shows. Bear in mind, I think they've walked back. You're not going re- to read off 50 of these, eh? I might. Oh, my God. <laughs> I don't know if it's 50. Okay. But I've got to – some. also, bear in mind they've walked back three of these. They have. Which feels to me like, okay, mm. here's three. Okay. Which means, like, I think they were going to do it anyway. Yeah, okay. You think this was a tactic. You yeah, think they're like, okay, definitely. we'll, we'll – um, they're like, we'll know some of these will get blowback and we'll, we'll bring those back and it looks like we're making concessions to the public. Some of these are also, just want to point out, a brand new – yeah. Uh, one of the examples, of course, being Willow. Yeah, yeah. Which just came out. Like six months ago, right? Yeah, less. Yeah, right. Okay, here we go. And they were going to do two more seasons of that, I think. That, that was, was the plan. And was maybe the plan. they will. <laughs> oh, James. <laughs> what? I can't dream? I can't be as optimistic as a new Nick Fury? Why start now, James? Why <laughs> start believing in dreams now? I believe in the new Indiana Jones movie, no, even don't. though you don't want me to. <laughs> I want you to, but I know you don't. <laughs> The Mysterious Benedict Society, Big Shot, Turner and Hooch, Willow, The Making of Willow, Just Beyond, The World According to Jeff Goldblum. I think they should keep The Making of Willow but remove Willow. (laughs) (laughs) 
And people are like, oh, that was really fascinating. Now time to what? Wait a second. <laughs> Pistol, Dollface, The Quest, The Hot Zone, Why the Last Man. That took like 14 years for somebody and to And I make. forgot it came out. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Some of the also for some of these, um, if you live in countries that are that are not the US, some of these will probably be on different yeah. platforms due to licensing agreements for a while. So the Why the Last Man in Australia is on binge, it's not on oh, is it? Plus. So that'll probably be around for a bit. So I don't know, check I it. mean, I probably still won't watch it. Yeah, I'm not gonna watch it either. But I could. Because it again, I think it's also mm. the the season didn't wrap up. So nah, fair the enough. series didn't wrap up, so. Maggie, Little Demon, The Premise, Love in the Time of Corona. No, 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 no <laughs> all right, no, yes. Everything's trash. That's not me saying that. That's the name of the <laughs> uh-huh, show. Uh-huh. Best in Snow, Best in Dough, The One and Only <laughs> Ivan. That's the one that Brian Cranston came out and said, hey, I made that. Oh, that's right. Well, it's something about a, a, a gorilla. gorilla. And a, yeah, I yeah. watched it with my kids. They liked it. Okay, uh, Timmy Fallier, Be Our Chef, Magic Camp, Howard, uh, Earth to Ned, Foodtastic, Stuntman, Disney's fairy tale weddings, Wolfgang, It's a Dog's Life with Farmer Bill. Bill Farmer, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if he's a... <laughs> So, I mean, imagine having worked on that and they're just like, this is gone forever. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Most of these, I would probably even say all of these, mm-hmm. do not have physical releases either. No, absolutely not. You're just asking people to pirate them. And when Disney Plus came out, along with The Mandalorian, the, the Jeff Goldblum one, that, that was, was the one they were that was pushing. The one they were pushing that so hard. It's like, oh, Lee's going to look at things and go, oh, ice cream. Do you want to see Jeff, but Jeff Goldblum talk about permaculture? I guess. Yes. Sure. <laughs> I never saw it. I so saw I guess some of it. I don't. I saw some of it. And? It's pretty good. Was it good though? Or was it like, was there much research or he'd turn up to a thing and they'd be like, this is how gravity works. And it's like, well, that's great. I'm sure there was a lot of planning in the pre, like the pre production stages where they'd talk to like the tattoo guys and be like, uh, you know, set up a, a, a thing and show it and a demonstration and the history yeah. of it or whatever. And then they just had Golden Rock up and be like, oh, 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 oh. Yeah. that's good. Oh. <laughs> Maybe one day, oh, I'll get a tattoo. Oh. <laughs> Not today. Oh. <laughs> okay, fair enough. So, yeah, there you, go. Uh, there you go. But one of them you mentioned was Howard, which is the um, yeah, the that- story behind one of the creators, one of the, one of the, the, um, Creative forces behind the the Disney the music, Renaissance, and, uh, yeah, like, the music of the yeah yeah the Little Mermaid yeah. and, and which is Beauty and the Beast, which has and, a movie this week. Yeah, there's a movie. Yeah, it's also called mm. The Little Mermaid. That's right, and it's not by coincidence. It's the same thing again. <laughs> yes, exactly. Yeah, so that wasn't one of the ones people were up in arms, especially because like he's such a like a pivotal like person yeah, at, yeah. in the time of Disney, which saved the company. Howard Ashman. Writes and composes songs for such classic Disney movies as The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast, and Aladdin. So yeah, he, yeah. so uh, yeah, the lyricist behind the Disney classics, and yeah, uh, p- people were mad. Yeah, and fair enough. And fair enough. Yeah, yeah. And again, that's purpose built for Disney Plus. Like, what yep. are you, what are you, what are you doing? Yeah. But I mean, I guess also you just you read at the start of it, and it goes, some of this music has even survived today because we've remade the movie. Here's a cl- sneak peek at the new Little Mermaid or that's whatever, right, yeah. and it's a crowd going, "I'm fucking idiots." <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yep. We're going to talk about it next week. Oh. I think Claire's going to come on, though. Okay, great. Sure. Because I said, Claire, you're a girl. I yeah, said, yeah, yeah. You like a girl movie. <laughs> Movies for girls. She can come up for the Barbie movie as well. Yeah. And Oppenheimer. Yeah. She can do the Barbie Oppenheimer <laughs> double bill. <laughs> so, uh, so there you go. Mm. Those are some things. Now, again, like I know a lot of people said, like, who cares and whatever. Look, I didn't watch. Most of those? I think I watched Willow. So, and also the, the thing about this, I guess, are... I guess on the one hand, Disney for years, people will probably remember, had a thing that was sort of unofficially called the Disney Vault. Yeah. Which is where they would I release. I think it was official, wasn't it? Probably it was official. Yeah. Where uh, they would release some of their stuff on VHS or, or, or a DVD for a while. Yeah. And then they would just stop selling it and it would disappear off store shelves and you just couldn't get it for years. And yeah. they're like, it's back. Beauty and the Beast is back. You can get it You're again for a limited time kind of thing. And I guess and, – and so Disney Plus has sort of been a real uh, complete 180 there because yeah. everything's been available for forever now. And I guess – and a lot of people were like, well, it's probably just a matter of time before they reinstitute this. Mm. But uh, I can't see any of this stuff like – or mo- most of it like cycling back on to the platform. No, it seems that. like it's gone forever. I also wonder because last week we talked about – or perhaps the week before we talked about the strike and we said – it's actually going to be good because we can just 
look at our enormous watch lists and go, maybe I'll finally watch all this stuff if there's no new stuff coming out. Yeah. And I wonder if some of this is a tactic of like, maybe yeah. we're actually going to take some stuff away. So uh... it is wild to me that it's more profitable to remove things mm. and have less content yes. than have like a bigger back catalog. And I don't think, I say this, I don't think at the, for the currently the idea would be to remove like the Disney classics or the Marvel right, shows yeah. or whatever, but it wouldn't surprise me if they do add this artificial scarcity yeah. to it. Or they change the tier listing where they're like, mm. okay, nine ninety nine gets you the garbage. Yeah, exactly. If you want, if you want a Marvel package, that's going to cost you an extra ten bucks. If you want the, if you want the, the if you want Disney Pixar, mm. if you're not, if you're not, if you're not willing to go see Elemental in cinemas because you know in a month's time it's going to be on Disney Plus, yeah. so why bother? Well, guess what? That's an extra ten bucks. So your options are go see it at the cinema or pay extra for the... I love those Pixar movies. It's like, what if your emotions had feelings or whatever? <laughs> what if your brain had a face? <laughs> what if your brain was on fire? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's all good stuff, man. Mm, it is good stuff, I think. Yeah. Uh, some other cost-cutting measures include <laughs> the Galactic Star Cruiser experience is closing. You familiar with this? Now, that's the one where... That's right. You're trapped in a room with screens on it. You're actually underground. You're in a bunker. And it costs six grand or something? Costs six, okay. Per day or something? Some astounding amount of money? So for those people who don't know, it's a Star Wars experience which came under the old guard, as in the guy, the previous Bob, not Bob Iger, Bob yeah, yeah. Chapek, uh-huh. who's apparently a notorious penny pincher. Right. And the idea is behind this thing, it's a, it's, it's the experience. You get on it and it's like you're on a spaceship. <laughs> yes. And so you go into your cabin and there's like a screen on the... On the wall, you, you're up, you're underground. Yeah, yeah. you're in a. You're in a sounds summer. just like my bloody life. I'm underground. I'm looking at screens, <laughs> <laughs> and you stay in there for like however many days. But for four guests, who knows what's happening on the outside world? You just don't know. Maybe the world's ended. Exactly. It's seven hundred forty nine dollars per guest, and it's six thousand dollars for the entire trip. I think that's for a couple of nights or. Yeah, right. And you get access to like. The Millennium Falcon ride and whatever the mm, fuck else. Right. Happens. So they're closing that down because people are like, who is this for? There aren't enough Star Wars fans with this much disposable income to do this. Oh, uh-huh, yeah, yeah. And who wants to sleep underground with a screen on it? And, <laughs> and like, they have to bring in, like, Star Wars actors who are on all the time yeah, kind of thing. It's really because, expensive, yeah. Yeah, it's, so, because, yeah, you, you know, you, maybe you wake up and you're like, I want to drink at the bar. And then you have to, they have to drink. Like, I, want to, I want to speak to Admiral Akbar. Well, he's dead. He died in <laughs> The Last Jedi. Yeah, but you need a guy to say he's dead. You need a guy to play one of his like extended family, like maybe his, Abtab. Maybe, he's in. He's in the. No, but like maybe, but that would be expensive because you have to do the makeup. Oh, okay. So maybe like a brother-in-law by marriage or whatever is like he's dead. He's dead. Don't you listen? <laughs> Don't you listen. It was on the, the Star Wars news. You don't watch Star Wars news. He's, I can do it. I can. Yeah, work you there. can do it. Yeah. Well, it's too late. <laughs> not yet. It's not closed yet. <laughs> so yeah, there you go. Another another cost cutting measure is they've scrapped plans to build a one billion dollar Florida campus, which would have housed two thousand relocating staff. Oh. Now publicly, yes. this decision was made by Bob Iger in response to Ron DeSantis, who was all like, "Everything's too woke, and I'm going to be president." Mm. Great. Uh, so that's cool. But the thing is, I don't think that's why they closed it. I think it's just. Part of the cost cutting yeah, right. thing. Like Ron DeSantis is like a billion dollars is a lot of money. Yeah, it's true, but he's temporary. There'll <laughs> be if he say he becomes president, it's possible. Sure. He's a weird little freak. He's so weird. Yeah. Like, why is he like he presents like a person? Mm. He's just fucking strange. What a weird freak. I agree. <laughs> Strong agree. <laughs> but maybe that's what the people want these no, days. No, but like, you know how Trump's like charismatic at yeah, least? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I see I, I don't like him. Right, you love him. I love him. Um, <laughs> no, but I see, I see the appeal, mm. and like he can be fun. This he's got. He's just, he's just like me. You know, he's just, yeah, like, yeah. he's gross. Yeah, I don't yeah, know yeah. what it is. I can't yeah. even specifically yeah, put yeah. my finger on it. Anyway, he's one like he's one like tripping up in an embarrassing way from being out of the race entirely. Like if he f- and he's like he's, if he's getting out yeah. of a car or something or going down some stairs and he trips and like falls over and yeah. you know he's. Big bus is in the air or whatever. Like, he's out. <laughs> He'll never live that down. Yeah, exactly. And what I think is interesting about this because you're supposed to, if you're a politician, <laughs> you're supposed to come at these things and talk about everything's too woke and whatever, but you're not supposed to do, do, anything, about do it. anything about it. Because then people, as in, like, I should say the media on all sides turn on you because it looks like you're attacking 
businesses and, mm, like and people's jobs. People like, love Disney. People love, love Disney, exactly. Oh, ban Disney. Well, you're out then. I mean, yeah. what, are you, what are you doing? I, but again, I think they're using this as an excuse mm. and they were going to shelve it anyway. Yeah, I think right. it's just cost cutting, but it's convenient to go, well, we hate this guy and so we're just going to not, mm. not do it. Anyway, funny stuff. That is funny stuff. So if you look at that, that's... I mean, that's is at least one billion dollars more on the way to saving three billion dollars. That's true. That's and, a third of the way there. Yeah, but uh, and that's not and like the Galactic Star Cruiser. How much are they saving that on well, that if they shut it down? My goodness. Oh, hang on, Greg's here. Um, <laughs> if, what time will you be finished? Can I do an interview at midday or should I? We'll be done by midday. We'll be done by midday. Yeah, we'll I got to be out of here by midday. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Excellent. Claire, are you coming on next? Are you coming on next week to talk about the Little Mermaid? Oh, you. Well, yes, I am. Are you aware it goes for two hours and 15 minutes? That's too long. <laughs> you know, I that film. I hate film. Everyone hates me because I said I hate Claire film. Claire hates wow. film. I've had many emails. I'm sorry. Which films? Like all films? I, I just made a statement on Twitter. <laughs> Interesting. Films. Like, Did you do that for engagement though? No, I didn't. But now I think maybe it was strategic. And yeah, yeah. Is yeah. that what you think now, do you? No, I don't think that. I'm regretting because I think everyone hates me. Wow. But is it better to have engagement or to be hated? It's hard to know. You can have both. Yeah. All right. Enjoy your dog walk. Okay. So many days, be fine. We'll be done. Thank you. Bye. Hey, let's take longer. <laughs> let's ruin Claire's 12, day. 15, here we go. Hates film. Ridiculous. That's like, rem- give me an example of a film she hates. <laughs> Just, I, she was basically talking about the Does idea. Does she mean of, film versus movies? No, it's the idea of that, like, film as or screens as a medium has taken over, art, like, art forms. Oh, like, okay, all right. art forms. So, like, it's just. As opposed to Instead like of a literature, literature, going to see something and whatever. Mm, going to and see I'm like, something. Claire, that's a real snob situation, and I yeah, disagree. Yeah. I love film. Yeah. And what film I love the most? A couple of noted slobs over here <laughs> would be against that. Go on, James. Uh, is Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny? Now you must be just rubbing your little hands together, that's right. James. I told you so. <laughs> Why did you get excited about? Indiana Jones that's and the right. Dial of Destiny. Mm, that's, that's what you're right. thinking. Yeah, yeah, look right. at you, so Ooh, smart. Oh, I hate to say I told you so, but uh, mm, Here's a, a tepid he- response at Cannes, <laughs> the fancy a- film festival for fancy film snobs <laughs> that Claire would be banned for life from, I imagine. Is a, um... But I would be there, <laughs> little 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 cheese in hand, little canapé in hand. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's right. Well, that's fun for you. Mm. Here's the Rotten Tomatoes headline, oh, which no. ca- came along with some of this, was Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny first reviews. Safe, wacky, empty, critics say. Ooh. Here's some reviews that I could read out to you guys. This is from Vanity Fair. One can feel the four credited screenwriters grasping an inspiration and coming up short. What they did manage to make would be perfectly fine as a standalone adventure film starring some other character, but it's not worthy of the whip. Like an Uncharted? Like an Uncharted. Okay. Man, you know who'd be great in Uncharted? Who's that? Donnie Wahlberg. This is from the Times UK. From one of the Saw movies. <laughs> yeah, that's right. The second and other Saw movies. Mm. It's from the Times UK. The good news is that it's not as poor as Indiana Jones and the Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. The bad news is it's not much better. Oh. It's from Robbie Cullen. It ultimately feels like a, counterf- like a counterfeit of a priceless treasure. The shape and the gleam of it might be superficially convincing for a bit, but the shabbier craftsmanship gets all the more glaring the longer you look. You know what I like about all these reviews? Clearly they've had a little bit of time to rub their little hands together, Nick Mason style, and be like, what's a clever little, clever little bon mot I can put in there? Not to, worthy of the whip? Is oh, that not worthy of the whip or like, oh, it's a shabby counterfeit. Oh, just like Indiana Jones. Blah. Yeah, man. You know? Anyway, you're loving this, aren't I'm you? I'm not loving it. I'm you're like, like, James, I told you so. You know what I'm loving? That this is low, massively lowering my expectations. Well, that so is true. I think true. probably when I go in this, I'll be like, yeah, a bit of fun. Yeah. Probably a bit of fun. We, we we were talking about, for Caravan and Garbage, we're going to be talking about the the, the previous Indiana Jones yeah. movies. And I think I think maybe something we didn't talk about when we talked about Raiders of the Lost Ark is that was meant to be a re, like a like done on the cheap because yeah. Empire Strikes Back was so expensive for the time. That they right, were like, okay. No, we didn't talk about that. Let's kind of, you know. We'll shoehorn that into the other ones. Let's let's just, uh, you know, let's just produce something that's, you know, cheap and fun. But this is this is $300 million, a $300 million movie? Yeah. Well, there is a section of the film, 25 minutes at the very least, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, at the start. This is, I mean, this has been said everywhere, so I, I apologise if it is a spoiler. Okay. Where they de-age Harrison Ford and it's like one of his old adventures. Yeah, right. Uh-huh. And just the idea to make it feel like one of the old ones and the money you have to put in just to be like, 
Yeah, right. Uh-huh. It's the 80s. Yeah, yeah, sure. It's the 80s again. Yeah, but uh-huh. if people are saying like that that action sequence is murky and the de-aging like isn't good. It's from the trailers, it looks amazing. I mean, we only get like glimpses we only, of it. We, though, we probably know. do get the best, the yeah. best versions of that. So, also, I want one frame where it's old and Aaron Reich. Yeah, just as young as young Indy. I think that would be fun. Do you think somebody's going to deep fake that at yes. some point? Yes. Yeah. So anyway, are you right in the sense of like going into this now? My expectations rock bottom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So I think I'm hoping that I come out and go like, that's fine, and I, I'll move yeah. on with my life. Because prior to this point, we were like, okay, Harrison Ford, he still loves Indiana Jones. James Mangold's Mangold. made just great movies. So this is going to be great. Well, I was saying that. You weren't saying no, that. No, that's true. I was, rubbing, I was, I I was, was too busy <laughs> rubbing my little hands together. <laughs> Covered in cheese and canapé dust. Mm. <laughs> so I'm very excited for this mm. now, Mason. Good. I love that. Here's one bit of news. Speaking of film. Film? I don't know if you saw this, but... Uh, Sad news in the world of Hollywood. The the Video Archives podcast announced this week that Rick Dalton has died at the age of 90 years old. I did see that. Now, so yeah. for people who, who don't remember, Rick Dalton is Leonardo DiCaprio's uh, character in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Leonardo. And also the Video Archives podcast, I didn't know, it was Quentin Tarantino's podcast where he talks about old video stuff. Oh, okay. It's him and uh, the Avery guy. What's the other guy? Roger Avery. Roger Avery. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the guy who wrote some of Pulp Fiction with him. They have a ah. podcast together and they talk about this. So they've just arbitrarily decided that Rick Dalton <laughs> is dead now, <laughs> which is fun. But I, I believe it is because Tarantino has a book coming out called The Films called of Rick. Called Rick Dalton is Dead. That's right. Ha, 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 ha. <laughs> uh, it's called The Films of Rick Dalton because when he when he wrote Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, he he created his entire yeah. uh, uh Filmography, filmography, mm. and and it, apparently it's in a lot of detail, and there's stuff that was in that's not in the movie, but yeah. is in the book, and he's there. It's going to be released pretty soon, so he's like, let's build some hype, and also people learn about the podcast. That's right. Like one yeah. of one of the world's most renowned directors. I don't think I, I had a that, podcast. Yeah. It's been going for some months, and I had no idea that it was on. You're going to give it a listen. I'm, I'm going to give it a listen. Wow. Um, but also, it, it brings up the the I think the thorny problem of. Okay, these are his films, but in what reality is, are these films? Oh, like which? Because he, Rick Dalton they're lives in the in, Pulp Fiction reality, yeah, right? Yeah, they're in the Pulp Fiction and Glorious Bastards reality. So, so is this the the films of Rick Dalton as they relate to us in the real? Is there a real Rick Dalton, or is this a Rick Dalton in that reality, the world in which uh, Sharon Tate was not killed by the Manson family because Brad Pitt's character killed them all, <laughs> and the world in which? Hitler did not die by shooting himself in his bunker at the end of World War II. Eli but in fact, Roth machine gunned him. Machine gunned him in a movie theatre. Yeah. I um, think, yeah, that's the reality. That's the reality. I so think, I think the idea of isn't the turning like one of the – that's the splitting off point in the Pulp Fiction reality. Yes, whatever it seems that way, Because yeah. Hitler suffered such a violent death that that violence bled into – not only media, but then into the real world. Yeah. And so that's why you get a Rick Dalton killing somebody with a can of soup or whatever. And that's why, like... Or whatever Brad Pitt's yeah, character's yeah. name is. And that's why, uh, like, you know, in Pulp Fiction and Reservoir Dogs, they're all talking... Yeah. They're, they're all very media savvy and they're all talk, They're always talking about movies. Yeah. Uh, which I, I believe, and we've probably talked about this before, but it, it was a Reddit fan theory of, about how all the Tarantino movies fit together and what reality. Yeah. And Tarantino, I believe, read this and went, yeah, sure. Yeah. Okay. That works. I agree. And um, you're right. Yeah, so like Kill, if those people don't know, Kill Bill is a movie within that universe. Yes. And so is Death Proof Death probably? Proof and the other one, Planet Terror. Yeah, yeah. So those are the ones that are machete. Yes. Those, uh-huh. like those kind of ones. Mm. Machete. Spy Kids. Spy Kids and Spy Kids 3D. That's right. Not Spy Kids 2, that's real. Mm. <laughs> that's right. That's, that's real in one. the real world. <laughs> <laughs> that one was inspired by true life events in the Pulp Fiction universe. Correct. Anyway, that's a bit of fun, isn't it? That is a bit of fun that a man who didn't exist died. Right. Trailers away, Mason. Mm-hmm. First up, we've got Extraction 2. I read right. Extraction Season 2. No, I hope it's well. called Extraction Season 2. Oh, wow. Yeah. Uh, Jake, <laughs> Jake Extraction is back. That's right. What's he, what's he looking for this time? I what's don't he looking? So let me reframe that. What's, what's he looking to do? Get a lady out of a situation. What's that called? Jake Straction. <laughs> yes, he's going to do a Jake Straction. That's what I thought. Yeah. In this universe, <laughs> yeah. his exploits are so renowned, they've... Chain in the in the in the world of special forces, they've renamed extraction to yeah. Jake Straction. I'm sorry, we're gonna to have to perform a tooth Jake Straction on you. That's right. That's right. I'm going to give you this numbing mm. yep. needle. Mm, that's right. Yeah. Wow. Uh, so that's exciting. 
But we are going, I'm, okay, I mean, due to your various misadventures, we are going to have to, t- Jake, strike this from your bottom. <laughs> so um, apparently it's got a 21-minute one-up. Mm, so so uh, it's going to it's going to look like a, a, a continuous sequence of events, yeah. no cuts. Is it real or is it, it now, doesn't matter really. No, it doesn't matter. M- my hope is, mm. not that it, again, I agree, it says it doesn't really matter, that it's not faked. Uh-huh. Like 21 minute wanna, if you're promoting it that way, says to me that this is one take. Mm, but again, yeah. I don't, it's fine if it's not. Yeah. It's, it's it's cool. I'm assuming it's the prison break where he lights yeah. his arm on fire. It's like that yeah, one yeah, yeah, uh-huh. that we see in one of the trailers. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah, Jake, Jake Straction, he's, he's doing good work. Bit of fun. He's doing lots of Jake's reactions. Mm. We also got a trailer for The Killers of the Flower Moon. Yes. Which is the latest from Martin Scorsese. This one also got, I think, a seven-minute standing ovation. Wow. People are writing about it and saying, no, this one's good. This was a good seven minute. This was a good under 10 minute standing ovation, actually. Absolutely. It's all about tone and in the it's all about tone in these rooms you will never get to be in. So exactly. Mm. Uh so people obviously being like, Leonardo Caprio is great and Brad Pitt's great or whatever, but Molly Burkhardt is apparently the standout performance in this. Oh. It's based on a real life event. Uh, it was a series of murders. That in, is correct. Yes, uh, that uh, uh, solved its relation to oil and something and w- whatever. <laughs> yes, it's oil and money and it is oil. So, kinds. so yeah. in um, in the basically in the early 1900s, yeah, uh, oil was discovered in the lands of the uh, Osage. Mm. A Native American nation, and a lot of uh, sort of Osage elders got very rich on it because the government was like, "Okay, you can. We could take all your money and oil." But this but one time, we're this not one going time we to. won't. But then over this, like a, a series of decades, like a lot of these people ended up dead. Yeah, and and a, a lot of it pointed to murder and like you know who's going to inherit the riches and who will be more mm-hmm. inclined mm-hmm. to sell this stuff off and et cetera. And some some of those murders were solved, but I think this is the case that led to the founding of the FBI. Because oh. like some of this is going across the borders. We're going to get Mulder and Scully on this. We're going to get old time Mulder and Scully on this. Or an F- UFO. We'll better get old time Mulder and Scully on this. That's right. So what I thought was interesting about this, and this is why Deadline, um, yes. Scorsese was talking about where he is at in life. And he says, this is how he starts it. I, this is depressing. Here I'm we go. old. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. That's how he starts yeah. it. I'm old. I read stuff. I see things. He didn't well, say good the, for you. He didn't see the movie Joker, though. That's true. He didn't. As we discovered. <laughs> That's right. Even though it was marketed yeah. off the back of him. Mm. Uh, I see things, I want to tell stories, and there's no more time. Kurosawa, when he got his Oscar, when George Lucas and Steven Spielberg gave it to him, he said, I'm only now beginning to see the possibility of what cinema could be, and it's too late. He was 83. And at the time I said, what does he mean? Now I know what he means. The whole world has opened up to me, but it's too late. It's too late. Damn. Fuck. Damn, Marty. Okay. I don't think it is too late for you, Marty. Marty! <laughs> I mean, it is in the sense of, like, how old is he? Yeah. Like, he's, he hasn't got ten movies in him. No, that's true. You know, so. Yeah, he's no Kevin Smith. No, he's 80. Mm. So he could he could live and and make movies for ten more years, yeah, yeah, which yeah. would be, what, three to four movies or whatever? Mm. But, yeah, I, I can understand this. Like, he's clearly, he's clearly still an incredible yeah. director. Yeah, yeah. And he's just... He's, you know, yeah. the time, anyway, this the looks very ticking. intriguing, very, yeah. very interesting. I don't, I don't know if it's a movie we'd cover for this, but maybe, maybe it depends what it depends what else is out that week. But um, De Niro's in it, obviously. De, De, DiCaprio, our favorite Irish actor, Lily Gladstone uh, is looks great. She's doing she's she's uh, doing a lot of good. She doesn't speak in the in the trailer, but she's doing a lot of a lot of good face acting. Mm. I thought uh, Jesse Plemons is in this. Yep, uh, Brendan Fraser is in this. Yeah. And John Lithgow is in this. Oh, oh very nice. Yeah. Uh, it's interesting there's not more uh, focus on Brendan Fraser on this, considering he just won an Oscar. But there'll be more trailers, Mason. There'll be more trailers. And I guess they'd, you know, they'd probably set all this up in uh, in advance. Did you see this? Uh, some A couple of people tried to – Brie Larson was at Cannes. Oh, yeah. And she got, like, set up twice. They tried to trick her twice. About what? <laughs> okay, so first they they asked was her. Was this like, do you hate men, Brie Larson? Yeah, yeah it was, it's on that level. Here's one. They asked her, should can screen Marvel movies? Yeah. And she said, I only know my perspective and I've never curated a film festival. So good work. Nice. That's good there. And then somebody said, somebody asked her about Johnny Depp's opening film. Because it was oh, okay. a screen of cans. And she said, you're asking me that. I'm sorry, I don't understand the correlation or why me specifically. 
So, oh, oh, very good. So just just trying to just yeah, just trying to squeeze some controversy out of out of Hollywood's most hated woman for existing. Let me just check them YouTube because mm. I bet they got some. We got some thumbnails from that one, Mason. Mm. Huh. No, doesn't mm. seem to be. Like or nothing in the top of the algorithm. Okay, right, right, right. I oh, know. I oh, know. That's from a year ago. Ah. It's like Brie Larson's very annoying, <laughs> and she's rude. She's rude. So. The Killers of Flower Moon, just want to say it's out on 6th of October and it also goes for three hours and 26 minutes. Very good. So there you go. Mm. See how that goes. I still maintain yes. the, the one. The, um, he makes terrific movies. Like Silence is really good. Did mm. you sell that about yeah, the, yeah. the priests who. Um, I haven't. No, I haven't. It's seen really that. great. Okay. And I should give The Irishman another go. See, I, think. I can't. The, I think the de aging genuinely yeah. like fucks that movie. But I think it was shocking like first time out. Yeah. So I'm like, okay, what if I. What if I Remember that that exists yeah. when I go in. Because it's go, not okay. just the de aging; it's yeah. like the physicality of yeah, them. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Like they got old men bodies. They should have done. They should have pasted their young. They should have youthified their faces, then pasted them on young men's bodies. You know, <laughs> or just recast. Or recast. <laughs> sure. I mean, I guess. <laughs> no, they they should have they should have given them young men faces and then pasted them on the body of the that bodybuilder from Free Guy. <laughs> Yeah. All of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Pesci, like, Bleh. That's exactly right, yes. I'm young and I'm big. That's right. Uh, Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning got a trailer, mm, part right. one. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, wow. What an end to the Ethan Hunt saga. I nearly yes. said Ethan Hawke. Mm. He's not in these movies, as far as I'm aware. Could be under a mask. But, yeah. um, you know, it shows all the things. It shows train stunts. He jumps yeah. off the thing and the whatever. Mm. Ethan Hunt's on the run. Is he going rogue this time? Probably. Probably. But probably for good reason. Exactly. You know? So. Not, not, nothing else much to really say here except I think this will do very well. Mm, they seem the to back. They seem to build and build every time. Yeah, you know, yeah, they, yeah. they they got oh the budget of that is two hundred and ninety million dollars. Well, that's not Indy Five money, is it? No, Mason. That's right. And then we got uh, another movie, uh, the creator. Oh yes, Gareth Edwards. Now who Gareth Edwards directed Rogue One. Sort of one, directed right? Rogue, Rogue One, and okay. he also directed um, Godzilla. 2014, yeah. whatever right. it was. Yeah, yeah. So I always confuse him with Gareth Edwards, who was the guy who directed The Raid. And, and I, uh, yeah, I also can. I, I have okay. a joke here. Nice. <laughs> I'm sick. You could have said <laughs> I confuse him with uh, Gareth Edwards, the Australian politician. He was around in the 90s for a bit. No, no. Okay, they I, him on I, the I confuse him with Peter Gareth. He made some offensive Peter r- Gareth. Remarks, there you I go, think. Peter Gareth. Peter Gareth. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's not related to Peter Gareth. Okay, that's but, true. But, uh, you know, I, I could say things. Like I'm that. still, okay. I'm still right. with it. So so the creator is basically uh, what if... Uh, what if amid a future war between the human race and the forces of artificial intelligence, for example, hypothetically, Joshua, uh, a hardened ex-special forces agent grieving the disappearance of his wife, is recruited to hunt down and kill the creator? The elusive architect of advanced AI who developed a mysterious weapon the power of the end of the world and humankind. Well, I was going to say what if a guy who directed a Star Wars movie was allowed to direct another Star Wars movie that was slightly different and they couldn't stop him. Because <laughs> it's certainly got that. that, that it's that, got that the part. Rogue One aesthetic, It's got baby. that aesthetic. If you look, and they've really lent into it. There's some, there's some uh, posters that have come out recently and they, they, are very, they look very uh, the guy. The you guy? Know, you know the guy? The Andor? designer guy. No, 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 the guy. Terry Gilliam? No, 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 but you're getting closer. John Safran? No, 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 the guy that did all the old Star Wars art. Gareth Edwards? Gareth Edwards, that's right, yes. The politician. Politician? No, 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 no. Um, what's his name? <laughs> you should know this. You're sick. I'm sick, Mason. <laughs> what the fuck's his name? Everybody knows. Drew Struzan. No, no. that's the Indian. That's the, that's that's the, the poster, poster guy. guy. That's the photorealistic poster guy. It doesn't matter. I'm gonna have to actually Google this. Okay, great. Ralph McQuarrie. Ralph McQuarrie. I didn't Google it. He didn't Google it. It's true. <laughs> it's true. We weren't here for 15 minutes. <laughs> James slowly. <laughs> Tapped index finger tapped down on his computer. <laughs> Last bit of news, Mason. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The CW's era of superheroes is over. No. This includes the cancellation of the Arrowverse series Justice U, which was upcoming. Okay. In addition to that, the female-led Zorro series and the Powerpuff Girls, which had a pilot a few years ago, then they went, yuck, we hate this, let's reshoot it, and then they didn't. Now, what you're saying there specifically, it's a Zorro show and separately a Powerpuff. Two it separate things. It wasn't Zorro meets the – it wasn't Girl Zorro meets the Powerpuff. No. Girls. Okay. But what a show that would be. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'd rather a Zorro what movie. What year is this, they'd say? I want a Zorro movie. Mm. I don't want Zorro TV. Uh-huh. Uh, and the other one is is 
Isn't there another Zorro show with that guy from that 70s show that they're making? Oh, yeah, about that's this. right, yeah. Mm-hmm. And isn't it also allegedly that guy the worst, maybe? Yeah, maybe they cancelled everything. <laughs> Maybe it's but that's canceled. different than this, though. Yeah, it seems different than that. Yeah, yeah. anyways. Uh-huh. Still up in the air for the moment, though, is mm. Superman and Lois and Gotham Knights. That's right. It seems like they're going to cancel it, though. So Brad Schwartz, you might know as the entertainment president at the CW. I don't know that, but all right. You might know. Maybe. I said might. Mm. Yeah, this to say. They were the hallmarks of the CW for a long time. As we look forward and try to make this network bigger and profitable, frankly, as much as we love these shows – and they had their time, they're not working on linear. Oh, it I, seems like an industry term <laughs> we don't understand. Uh, so apparently they're going to aim for a wider demo. At the moment they're, they're, they're hitting the 18 to 34. I mean, it's such a narrow demo these days of people who like superhero stuff. It's no, so narrow no. at this point. Uh, How do we get those viewers? They're going for 18 to 49. Okay, sure. Uh, so it says the CW mm-hmm. uh, has, has lined its full schedule with shows now, you mentioned, like, what's worse than reality TV? Oh, yeah, here we go. Uh, but not as bad as AI. Good memory, by the way, <laughs> for someone who's sick and has bad diarrhea. I'm just pretending to be sick. Oh. The diarrhea is real. <laughs> the CW has lined its full schedule with shows that have already aired abroad. A cancelled cab- cable show, AMC 61st Street. All right. <laughs> and the rejected reality show, HBO Max's F-Boy Islands. Oh, no. Okay, wow. All right, great. So, so what's so worse than reality TV? Reality TV that people didn't want and then it got cancelled. Great. Oh, didn't somebody... I mean, this is cheap, though. If they can get this going and, make, and yeah. popularise this, stuff, they're going to make fucking bank. Because this is so cheap to do. But it's also, it's like that thing of, you know, when you people make a... Uh, here's an example that's relevant to us. If you make something different on a YouTube channel, uh-huh. YouTube... And audience as well often, they just crush it. Just be yeah. like, no, mm. and it'll just disappear. I, I feel like you have to pivot this whole thing. Yes. And I, it's possible, uh-huh. but I don't know whether going with a cancelled show called 61st Street and F-Boy Island mm. is maybe the... Which is a reality show that, let's be honest, was based on a joke from 30 Rock from yeah. like 10 years ago plus. Exactly. Um, now you're thinking of Milf Manor. I'm thinking of Milf Manor, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> Which is based on Milf Island. Okay, right. Um, you're, you're absolutely right. Um, I don't have it here, but also this week, I think there was uh, a, a TV station was like, "Oh well, we don't have to. Uh, you know, all the all the writers are on strike, but we can just we've got a we've got a we've got a lineup that is that is absolutely strike proof. It's here. And it's, oh, I don't have it here. I'll, go, I'll have to <laughs> find it. But it's just the it's that it's that level of dreck. <laughs> oh man! And as you said earlier, there's yeah. so much stuff that. You know, mm. I haven't watched, so I'm happy to. They can strike. They can take the year off, man. Mm. Oh, here it is. ABC unveiled their strike proof fall 2023 line. Here we go. Mm. Uh, Monday, 8 p.m., Dancing with the Stars. Yes. 10 p.m., The Golden Bachelor. Tuesday. What, so, what's The Golden Bachelor? I think it's The Bachelor, but it's older people. Oh. Tuesday, Celebrity Jeopardy, Bachelor in Paradise. Wednesday, Judge Steve Harvey, Abbott Elementary repeats, What Would You Do? What Would I Do? Well, that's the show it's called. Oh. Thursday, Celebrity Wheel of Fortune, Press Your Luck, The $100,000 Pyramid. Friday, Shark Tank 2020. Saturday, Saturday Night College Football. Sunday, America's Funniest Home Videos, The Wonderful World of Disney. Sounds great. Yeah, terrific, right? What a wonderful Look, I know people obviously watch stuff like that, but that sucks. Yeah. (laughs) It's bad. (laughs) Your lineup sucks. Yeah, that's bad. It sucks and it's bad. Yeah. Mm. That's fun. I think it's fun that a lot of the, the TV stations are producing stuff. That sucks and is bad. Yeah. They also, they know that. Like, yeah. this is a bluff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, you can't live off this. Right? You know that. <laughs> Me as an audience member. <laughs> you as an audience member. Them, right. a, them as a network. Mm. That's fun. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let's see how that develops over the coming weeks to months. Yeah. In the world of cinema. Oh, yes. Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 is still holding strong. It had something like a 32 million US weekend. All right, all right. Which I feel also in the coming weeks it could weekend to weekend do better than Fast X depending on how Fast X holds. Here's a, here's a thought also, uh, and this is probably not an original thought, but there were, it, it, it opened up strong mm. and then there was kind of a drop-off. Yeah. And it seems to be... It was a good drop-off though. Yeah, but yeah. also I wonder if it's because... You know, a lot of people do Marvel repeat viewings when it's out at the, the movies. And the movie's good. That's And the movie's good. But I also wonder if people are like, I'm going to need a week. Mm. This one was pretty heavy. Yeah, that's you interesting. Know, maybe, yeah. maybe I'll need a week and then I'll, I'll take a breath 
and then I will come back and I'll watch I it. I know you when- said that's not an original thought. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And that's true because I've thought that. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> never never expressed it in any way. I don't need to express every thought I have, Mason. I think you do. I could keep some things to myself. It's 2023. You cannot. <laughs> There's no money in it. <laughs> And you're, you're right. on the treadmill. Yeah, you're right. Stop holding things in. I'm sorry. We could have made a video about that. I could have said, you know, people probably need a week off from watching Guardians. It's pretty heavy stuff. And you could have said, I agree. And then... Here's ten reasons. That's right. <laughs> this is a bloke gets shot. <laughs> uh, he didn't like it. He didn't like it. <laughs> pretty heavy. <laughs> you guys right? We're not going to spoil guys. No. <laughs> see ya. I can see you nearly going to nearly, say, yeah. name one of the terrible things yeah, that happened yeah. to that movie. Mm. But we're also not going to spoil Fast X, not straight up. That's right. We'll do some vagueness. Mm. It's fine. We'll do our, some of our famous vagueness. All the spoiler stuff comes in like the last 10 minutes. That's true. Also, the last I, X minutes, please. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> That's good. That's a, I, I was hitting my fist, but I was, I was genuinely funny. I liked it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, anyways, we'll talk. We'll say spoilers when yeah, spoilers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On a budget of $340 million. <laughs> Oof. And boy, you can see it on the screen. I'll tell you what, most of the time, sometimes, sometimes you can't. I don't know. It, and then you got to pay for those Oscar winners, baby. You got to. There's ro- so many Oscar winners yeah. in this movie. There's at least three. At I least. think I'm undercounting, but there's yeah. yeah. What was it Brie Larson, Ellen Mirren, Ellen Mirren, Statham? Uh at least uh, it's um ludicrous. No, John Cena. No, Car. Yeah, Car. <laughs> I've lost. Uh, there's definitely an, another one. It's definitely... Oh, uh, the woman from um, West Side Story, original West Side Story. Rita Moreno. Yeah. Yeah. She's, she, she's, she's, a, she's won an Oscar. Yeah, there you go. There's... Also, did you know this? She's in these movies because Rita Moreno's grandson met Vin Diesel at the premiere of West Side Story and said, you should put my grandma in your movies. And he went, all right. Ooh. Ooh, good I idea. Will. Here's something else. I think it's four then. I, I can't I'm, – I'm blanking on the fourth, but there is another Oscar winner. Who's, okay. Well, why, he's uh, just collecting them. I want to come back to the Rita Moreno thing. Also, he did a, a Chronicles of Riddick with um, M from Judy, Bond movie. Judy, Judy Dench. Dame Judy Dench. I nearly also said Oscar. Judy Moneypenny. Judy Moneypenny. Yeah. Judy Moneypenny, baby. Yeah, he knows how to ra- ra- rope in talent, Mason. That's true. Uh, so in addition to the three hundred, Charlize Theron. Of course. Yeah. Monster. In addition to $340 million it took to make because also they lost its director yeah. the week it started filming. Ooh. And then Louis Leterrier just jumped in. Yeah. No no setup. He's just like, all right, I'll yeah. do it. Well, he did Transporter with Statham yeah, yeah. and a bunch of other stuff. He probably um, met uh, Louis Leterrier. Vin Diesel probably met Louis Leterrier's grandson at yeah. Premier of West Side Story. Will you, let, will you let my grandfather please direct a movie for you? Well, we already have a director for our latest What movie. is this? Who it's, are it's, the, it's the kid. And okay. It's like, all right. I'm sick, Mason. Yeah, all right. <laughs> Where did he grow up? Where was he raised and educated? I don't know. All right. Out um, space, I anyway, think. in addition, it had $100 million in marketing. Mm. The box office return for this, the US opening weekend was $67 million, which is the seventh highest for the Fast franchise. Okay. Which isn't great, but globally, mm. it's made $252 million, which would be, make it about $320 million in total. Okay. So globally it's doing very well. Mm. Uh, it's the num- it has the number two global opening of the year behind Mario. Number two global opening. Thank you. What do you think the story was? Oh, all right. All right. Well, let's tell you what, things are looking good for the fast crew. Yeah. They're having they're having every weekend they're having barbecues and then they're doing a vague mission for an agency. Beers and you know that and agency? Babes. Yeah. A weird agency that it's like Sort of like the World Security Council from the Marvel Universe. It's it is just now, like, isn't it? Just like shady dudes in silhouette on yeah. screens being like, I vote for terrorism or whatever <laughs> this time. I wouldn't vote for terrorism. No, I wouldn't vote for terrorism either. I would never put in no, a vote for I'd terrorism. I'd vote for kindness. Me too. But uh, anyway, they're doing those missions and everything's looking pretty great and everybody's having a great time and Brian's looking after the kids, obviously. Um, obviously. Yeah. Uh, and uh, But then but then, what's, what's going to happen? But a spectre from their past is going to show up. Boom. It's the Joker, <laughs> yeah. isn't it? Yeah. It is. Anyway, that's the movie. Yeah, it is the movie. Yeah, what did you think of this overall? Okay, I will say this. Yes. Of the bad ones. Okay. Because, like, <laughs> great start. There's like a bunch of bad ones, obviously. Bearing in mind, I also, if people are new listeners, I did not care for Fast Nine. No, I didn't. I would like say that. overall, big fan of this franchise. Nine was a massive step down for me. Yeah. For I, reasons that I cannot remember. Yeah. Also, Hobbs and Shaw, I did not like. Oh, yeah, that one sucks also. Yeah. But I think of the bad ones, mm-hmm. this is. 
the best bad one. Okay. And it's because of Jason Momoa. Mm. And I think he's wonderful mm. in his weird billowy genie oh outfits. Oh, my God. He loves, a, he, loves a silky, <laughs> he loves a silky pair of slacks, doesn't he, this man? That's all just his own wardrobe. I'm pretty it confident. must be. Yeah. I would say this. Uh, I, rec- I felt this movie was like 90% super fun, just sort of very mainstream blockbuster, very charismatic people involved, you love them, yeah. and then 10% just absolutely irredeemable garbage. <laughs> That's what I thought of this movie. Well, you and know, we'll, I think we'll, we'll, we'll break that down later. I definitely. Think. I think I maybe have a reason why you feel that way. Oh, I, I don't feel dissimilarly. Uh-huh. It's because everybody, every little adventure in this is like a different movie. Mm. So at least partially because – Apparently, Vin Diesel will not work with some of these people anymore. But what that means is yes. that, like, you've got like the fun crew, which is like Han and Ludacris and Tyrese, Tyrese and, and Ramsey, and Ramsey, and they're going off doing fun, silly little things. Mm-hmm. You got Michelle Rodriguez and Charlie Theron doing a thing, and then you've got just Vin Diesel alone, yeah, for just a wandering lot around, of this. being like, I don't know, <laughs> and it's boring, right? Yeah. Can you hang out with somebody, man? This is fucking boring. You're boring by yourself. Hang out with your brother who you've... Who you, who, oh, yeah, that's another story point. His hang, brother. hang out with your brother who you you know who you know reconnected with after 20 years of him being a super secret secret agent yeah. behind your back or whatever. What's interesting about his brother in this, John Cena, or as I like to call him, Dom Cena, nice. is that he's had a brain transplant. He has. He's just John Cena now. <laughs> Which isn't a bad thing. No. I think... I mean... It, Nine is a te- it's crap. Yeah. It's a crap movie. So yeah, I mean, you could go okay. Well, in the last movie, he was so he was so mean and and straight laced because he was on a mission of revenge, and now that's all been cleared up because it was a slight misunderstanding. Mm. It turned out in the end, he's he's back to his old ways where he's a fun loving guy. Yeah, maybe that's why. But it is it's such a it's such a handbrake turn, James. I'd say that. Well, much. that's a great way to put it. Mm. Yeah. There's lots of callbacks in this. I hope you like seeing locations and things from previous mm. movies. I hope you remember, I should say. <laughs> I hope you like family. Yeah. Because I tell you what, there's more family in this than there's ever been family in any of these movies ever before. We've reached family saturation. Wow. There's people in this you haven't thought about for like four movies. It's suddenly they're like, I'm back and look at my family. Who's that? Um, <laughs> um, um, Vin Diesel's old wife. Remember her? Oh, yeah. She's got family now. Yeah, um, yeah. Uh, Mr. Sunglasses, his family's in this. Oh, uh, Mr. Sunglasses' yeah, family. Yeah, yeah, his family. Scott Eastwood's back. Oh, yeah, shit, Scott Eastwood's in this. <laughs> fuck. That's a, <laughs> that genuinely surprised me. Yeah, he's in this. Like, fuck, I remember him. I think he's a beard now. I don't think he had a beard in eight. <laughs> I think he's, he's back, though. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah, it's... It's interesting, and they've got, like, God's Eye is back. Yep. It's Now it's on a little palm pilot. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that bridge is back. Yep. From five. Uh-huh. Um, the, the car that flips cars? Yeah, that's in a... That's, you see you it, see in, see it in, a, in a scene in a room. There's, yeah. a, there's a room where yeah, you yeah. see the car that flips cars from six? Yeah, clearly clearly Owen gifted a, a, a car flipping car to his brother. <laughs> and just as you have this one. Happy birthday, brother. Thanks, I love you, bro. Here's a question. I love you, bro. <laughs> I love you, brother. Where's he? Where's Owen Shaw? <laughs> he was in... He's not dead. He's in eight, I want to say. Is he? Yeah. Huh. All right, then. I don't know. All right, great. We stopped at seven for Caravan and Garbage. Yeah, 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 right. So, so here's, here's something interesting. Yes. Vin's mum, mm-hmm. Rita Marina, yes. listen to this. Listen yes. to me when I say this. Oh, yes. That's his grandmother. Yes, that's right. <laughs> listen yes. to me, Mason, yes. when I say this. Yeah, yeah. It's his well, grandmother. Yeah, it makes sense because Dom Toretto's 30. So it would make <laughs> sense that, yeah, you worked out. Okay, she's probably like, you know, 65. Or okay, whatever. so if you look at it this way, he, he, she's 91. In real life. By the way, an incredible 91. Agreed. Love all of that. Mm -hmm. Vin Diesel is 55. Right. It's technically possible. Sure. Mm -hmm. But (laughs) bizarre. It doesn't seem right, does it? (laughs) Seems wrong. (laughs) I mean, it's just, I I know he's like 40, right? He's 40? Mm. He's supposed to be 40? Because in the first one, he's supposed to be like 22, I assume. Right, sure, yeah, okay. So he's 40, right? Ish. Yeah, I guess, sure. And in that case, it's perfect. I love product pa- placement, Mason. Uh-huh. I love the Samsung Fold phone, oh, yeah. where even on the screen uh, of the movie, you see the big crease down the middle of it. <laughs> it's really selling that. Chop it out. The, 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 the boffins in the visual effects department, well, we can't get the fold. We can't get the crease out. We, can't we tried to it. take it out, and it just it came back stronger. I put a crease on my computer. I don't understand. <laughs> 
Hot Wheels. Mm. The the video game. Right. Corona. Oh yeah. Stella Artois. Ooh. Coca-Cola. Some per- sort of Belgian beer, probably. Yeah. Coca-Cola, purple Coca-Cola, British Fanta. Ooh. These are all good things. Mm. That I enjoyed in this in this movie, Mason. Nice, I love those. I love all those. I think some of the CGI on this is a bit ropey. There's some green screen, blue screen situations which don't look great. Mm. Especially some out there's some outdoor segments. There's a bit on a bridge which looks like yeah, they're yeah. obviously not really on a bridge. But I think I liked all the locales generally. Yeah, when I I mean then there's bits within that. There's a moment in Rome where Dom reverses his car down a flight of stairs and it uh-huh. just looks very odd, yes. Terrible. Mm. That's when he's playing yeah. foosball with a bomb. <laughs> that's right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. yeah with ping pong situation yeah, yeah. that's going on. Um, but again, all of this is kind of like You knew what you know what you're going in for. You know what you're going in for, but I feel like there's a there's an unreality to moments in this which the better ones or even the better sequences in this yeah. don't mm. have. Yeah, I mean, if the, if they if they were better at tightening those up and making it feel like okay, well they are they are playing foosball with a with a big bomb that's rolling down the street. Yeah. If that felt more real, you would be more inclined to, like, you'd, you'd be less taken out of it. I think. Yeah. But then I think also they're probably like, well, the fans are here for ridiculous stuff and re- ridiculous interactions and what have you. Which I think again, the standout of this movie is probably Jason Momoa. Definitely. We, I mean, we talk, you know, people talk about Jason Momoa of like, eh, he's a big guy and he's just being a big, he's just being a big tough guy kind of thing. But like, if you look at most of the roles he's done, yeah, you get this, you do like Aquaman, yep, Cal Drogo from Game of Thrones, GOT, yeah, yeah, and 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 Duncan Idaho, yeah, sure. From they're all wildly different. Conan, Conan the Barbarian, Baywatch Malibu, Baywatch whatever. Malibu, Stargate Atlantis, <laughs> yeah. Um, like he's he's got he's got range. I agree. Yeah, and he's great in this. He's the Joker. Yeah, he is the Joker. He's uh, he's he's the son of the bad guy from Five, as we know. Yes. Uh, and he's out for revenge. Everyone's de-aged for some reason. That's they right. don't need to be, but they are. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, and he's he's just he's he's there. He's um he's just uh he's 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 chewing up a storm. He's chewing up a storm of scenery. That's right. And it's and it's good. Yeah, it's interesting because every time like. Vin Diesel or somebody gets out of the Joker scenario, which is put in his way. Yeah, uh-huh. he has a, sec- a second and probably third and fourth Joker scenario mm, ready that's for right. them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Every time he's like, "Well, mm. you thought you got out of this, so there's actually an even bigger yeah, car or a bigger right. bomb, and that's right. You didn't know and whatever." Mm, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Mm. It's funny because that, that all like culminates in this moment at the end when he's like, "This is where I meant to get you here." It's like there's no way you could have. <laughs> Like done, uh-huh. any, like this. yeah, yeah, right, right. Yeah, the fact uh-huh. that you thought he would have lived this far is <laughs> ludicrous <laughs> sure, to me. Yeah. <laughs> and you're not just talking about. Chris I'm not Ludacris talking about Bridges. Chris Ludacris Bridges. Let's talk about him, man. Although there's and some ludicrous stuff and stuff happening on Bridges. There certainly is. So they have the um, in honor of Chris Ludacris Bridges. I have <laughs> so, to imagine. Yeah. <laughs> so they have a little adventure where they have to go get a. They get hacked. They don't have any money and <laughs> have to go get a whatever. So they go into a PC shop and they meet. Pete Davidson in Brit in Britain. Mm-hmm, sure, he's like, "Hello, but I'm not British. I'm regular." I'm Pete, just Pete Davidson. Davidson yeah, yeah. Because this is a soundstage in Malibu or whatever. And, and Ludacris and um, Tyrese have a little punch up in the shop, which uh-huh. is it's a which is a fun moment, I guess. There's a moment at the end where he throws like dust at the light. Where do you get the dust? What's happening? I don't know. Is that it? Like what? What is that? Is that his signature move? I don't yeah, know. like an. Because it's not a magic trick either. No. It's like presented like it's magic. Han also unhallucinates in that scene. Yeah. He's eating a muffin, which has hallucinogens in yeah. it. Yeah. And he's like, ooh. And then he just puts the top back on it. Yeah. And it sto- he stops hallucinating. Yeah. Like he's closing a jar of jam <laughs> something. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know why that's in there. That feels like one of those Transformers moments where it's like, <laughs> it does why, is like there a, that. why did this scene happen? You, like this, this movie's already too long. You could just chop that and it wouldn't matter. Like if you just yeah if you just snipped the bit where he ate the muffin and snipped the bit where he hallucinated, it'd just be him looking at uh, Ludacris and, and Tyrese and going, and going huh. oh okay yeah and you go well and I guess they were like well they need to have him do something in yeah. this scene so it's interesting because that I'm te- glad to have Sun Kang back as oh as yeah he's Han. great and and 39 he's according 39. to his dating profile mm. it's interesting because that team and I guess others do things that Dom would never do like he'd never go into a, like a like a PC repair shop. Dom would sure. never do that. He'd never get high either accidentally on purpose. Like he'd never fly economy, which John Cena is doing. You would never get Dom Toretto in a fucking economy seat on these 
in, in, Has the, in he ever movies. been on a plane? <laughs> I mean, besides like a trip transport. Or yeah, a, that's what I'm saying. Or a, or a, he, uh, he's been in plenty of planes where he's in a car in a plane. Does he only get into planes if he can be in a car in a plane? Yeah, maybe. Yeah. There's a moment also where he tips a car one-armed. Mm. Remember that bit yeah, on yeah, the bridge? Yeah. He just, just these incredible strength is... It's come back. There's a moment where also they have to travel back, the the nerd team, in a shipping container, mm-hmm. but it's filled with cologne bottles. Uh-huh. And when they get out, they're like, oh, too much cologne in there. Did you break all the bottles in there? <laughs> Were you just, maybe this one's not cologne. <laughs> oh, no, it's cologne. <laughs> What's happening? What are you doing? Silly Mason. They're doing comedy, James, and you <laughs> fell for but it. <laughs> you fell for it, Here's the idiot. thing, though, like, it's not funny, mm. right? Is it funny? I think some of it is kind of funny. Is it, though? I don't feel like anybody's writing anything. I think it's more funny than I mean, than somebody nine. would have had to, like, wrote a shipping container full of cologne mm-hmm. and all the cologne bottles are broken. Mm. But also... Maybe that's how cologne is shipped these days and they don't care and they're like, well, as long as some of it makes it, we don't yeah. care. We'll smash these shipping containers together. Did you like how Peter Overton was in this? Who's that? Oh, from uh, Channel 9 News. The Australian News, mm. news reporter. Pe- is he in any of the other ones? I feel like I've seen him in... Maybe, Maybe Moonfall or something. Mm. He's the go-to. That was so the, as you've seen in the trailer, but a big bomb goes off in Rome or something. Mm, that's right. A and neutron the, bomb. And they're like, a big bomb went off Olivia in Rome. Olivia neutron bomb. <laughs> that's right. A big bomb went off in uh, Italy, but luckily nobody was killed. You sure? That's lucky. Yeah, yeah. Also, the, the point of a neutron bomb is it goes off. And, like, the building stays standing, but everybody dies of radiation poisoning. Oh. So are you sure that isn't what happened? They should have just said it was a big regular bomb. I don't know. <laughs> a big regular bomb went That's off. Right. But big, no... Bigger than you've ever seen going in the streets of Rome. It's the biggest Roman <laughs> bomb I've ever seen. <laughs> um, Jack Reach is in this. That's right. And the reason that Alan he, Richson. And the reason he can't be persuaded to join Dom's team is because he's like, I hate barbecue. I don't like barbecues. That's right. But he's, he's the new head of the agency. Which That's right. Previously, a role previously held by Mr. Sunglasses. He's the biggest man in the world. Alan Richardson, he yeah. really is. Mm. I mean, not as big as Dom Toretto. No, well, they're sorry. even. He's the second biggest. He man also in the has world. Alan Richardson's character has like on all his shirts. He has like a this shoulder thing, and I'm like, is that a shoulder holster for a gun? It's not. It's just this weird. Is it a like rank? a pattern? Is it? It feels or? like a rank badge or something. Oh, okay. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway, I like him. Mm, he's same. good. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's no Scott Eastwood. That's true. He's in these movies. For, yeah, yeah. for a minute. Yeah. Should we? Let's let's. I think that maybe that's the first moment we should talk about in spoilers. Scott sure, Eastwood okay. is the 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 role of Scott Eastwood in this movie. So what are we saying? I'm going to say best movie ever. I had fun with this, but I uh, you know oh, I don't know, man. I think maybe this is one of these movies where the mood I was in determined whether I enjoyed it or not. I didn't like the way it wrapped up. Like it would like it's like the promise of things to come. Mm. It was like the laziest. Well, we got to talk about it, that. It, certainly. Avengers: Infinity War. Ended, yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. it was just kind of at least like in, at least Avengers: Infinity War ended on a thing that happened. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. <laughs> so, look, I guess I would say for these, it's yes. one of the better bad ones. Okay. Jason Momoa gets it across the line. Mm. There's a lot of people in these that I like. Mm. So I guess I mean I say best movie yeah. ever, but you mm. need to just know what this is. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So I, if you don't like these, this is not going to... Oh, this is not going to persuade you at all. <laughs> no. This is maybe not the... F- if you've never seen one, this is not the one. That- <laughs> I think you would understand the rough plot. Oh, yeah. But I think you'd need somebody there to be like, no, that character's new. No, that character's been here for 20 no, that years. that character's dead. Yeah. No, they're not now, but <laughs> yeah. they were dead. And now they were dead and dead. now they're back. Yeah, they lost their memory for a minute. But then somebody said, remember who you are. Yeah. And let's go to a weird um, drag race in the desert. Yes. And you'll remember. Oh, yeah, Jason Momoa just has pictures of all the other movies. He sure does, yes. <laughs> just see even Scott from... Eastwood. He's even got a yeah. picture of Scott Eastwood. Anyway, uh, I'm going to say best movie. What are you going to say? Yeah, I guess. You're going to say you guess best movie. I ever. guess it's okay, the best Okay, now we're in big time spoiler territory. Bearing in mind for what it is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah for yeah. what it is. What right, it is. right, right. Okay. It's one of the – it's got some very entertaining stuff in it's it. It's got some very entertaining stuff in it, like Scott yeah, Eastwood. Yeah, man. Anyway, uh, big time spoilers. Here we go. Uh, first thing is, um, so the reason – the, the 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 dumb team go to Rome. The fun team they go to Rome yeah. because they're tricked into thinking they have a, a mission in Rome. The agency, the very vague agency. Yeah, I'm thinking it's probably they could just say it's the CIA, but I think they probably don't because a lot of the places they go were ruined by the CIA. Oh, okay. So right. they're like, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. why would Dom work for you know anyway? Um, but they're sent to Rome on this mission. But it turns out they haven't been sent to Rome on a mission. Tyrese has been tricked. And actually, it was Jason Momoa to getting him there so they could blow up the, the Rome with a neutron bomb. Yes. Um. 
Regular bomb. And Scott Eastwood's like, we didn't send him on a, on a mission. And then he falls out of a car and then he's never mentioned again. <laughs> and surely he could be like, oh, no, nah, they got tricked. Yeah. Uh, he, could talk to, he could talk to Alan Richardson and be like, they got, they got tricked actually, um, so this is not their fault. But no, he's too busy sitting by the side of the road, I guess. Going, also oh. Alan, but also Alan Richardson yes. is a, he's a bad guy. He's the bad guy. The whole time he was the bad guy. I knew he was the bad guy the whole time. Did you? Because you could see him at the start of the movie. He's in the flashback. Is he? Yeah, I didn't know that. So. We flash back to the flashback later, and then he's the guy sitting in the chair. But it's obviously that, yeah. it's obviously a guy who's like enormous. I was like, is that John Cena? Like, that's an enormous man. Is it yeah. John Cena? No, it's not John Cena. Well, it has to be Alan Richardson. Oh, yeah. I didn't. I didn't notice that at all. I was too busy being wrapped up in it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Shaw reappears. Obviously, mm. there's a moment where so he's he's got a punching bag. He's doing some punches. He's done that before. Kicks. He did it in Hobson Shaw, I think. Where there's a guy in the punching bag. Yes. What I liked about that is. For a second, I thought the guy who busted out in his underpants was that guy we talked about from the previous... The car dealer. The car dealer who... Yeah. <laughs> Is it exactly they made right. one all the way in his underpants? He's just been for a wa- second. He's I just thought been it- wandering the, the streets of London in his underpants for years. I thought it was him. Yeah, for uh-huh. a split second. Well, so that man gets beaten up, presumably for hours, and then he gets hit by a car and he just walks away. He's yeah, fine. man. Yeah. Uh, I didn't mention this. This is not really a spoiler, but I thought all the John Cena stuff was fun because he's just allowed to be like, I'm a fun guy. I'm a, fu- I'm a fun cool. Yeah. I'm a fun car. I've got a bat plane. Okay, a few, a few, a few things though. There. Oh, how so? We spend most of that trip thinking he's got like a surfboard in a bag. Yeah. And it turns out to be a, a jet drone glider plane or whatever. Yeah. So they just let him on the plane with that, did they? I know one of the the, the air stewards is on his side or whatever. He's got special CIA privileges. He's got special CIA privileges. Then why did he get on that plane? Why can't he get on a different plane? But he didn't. He didn't. That's true. Anyway, they 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 um they launched. Also, I feel like his car, you know, his yeah. Canon car, yeah. was just made from the ground up to like paper over Plot holes. Of what? Like I feel like there must have been they're, – they're in the writer's room and they're like, okay, so uh, we're going to need he's, – he's going to be driving in the car with, with Dom Toretto's kid and we're going to need Jason Momoa to get him out of it, steal the kid out of the car. Yeah. And they're like, how could you get the kid out of the car? He's in the car. What if he wasn't on, in the car? What if he was on the car? Why would he be on the car? I don't know. Maybe he's got to fix something on the car. What could you need to fix on a car? I don't know, a cannon? <laughs> Maybe the car's got cannons on it and he's been using the cannons and one of the cannons jams so the kid gets on the car to unjam a cannon and then Jason Momoa shows up and steals him or whatever. I like your thinking. And then later it's like, well, how's John Cena going to sacrifice himself but not really, but he has to film Peacemaker Season 2. So (laughs) he's going to need to leave for a movie and then come back in 12. Uh, How are we going to let him sacrifice himself? I don't know. Maybe the cannons can tilt tilt into the ground. And and then he can... (laughs) You can Mario cut himself across I, the rainbow road. I don't often laugh out loud <laughs> like in anything. Yeah, ever, really. But I I really that really got me. <laughs> Just the sincerity of yeah, it. Yeah. Everybody's serious face. Because he's so goofy for the entire movie, and then he's like, Well, now it's time to be now it's time to be very serious, sincere man, and make the big sacrifice. I'll do it by firing my car into the air with four cannons. <laughs> And then he just flips it, and everybody's like, "Oh no, <laughs> you do it! You could have done almost anything else. I don't know what you're doing." Fired here. the cannons at him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That would probably be one of the things. Also, and there's never any explanation. He also but... made Dom's son a murderer. That's true. <laughs> hey, kids, shoot these cannons! But I mean, they're already setting him up for that. Yeah, He's like I know. ten or eight or whatever, and they're like, "Drive this car, go, little Brian." Yeah, you can do it. Yeah. Um, Man, I wish regular Brian was here. Yeah. Then Vin Diesel would have somebody to talk to. That's right. Okay, I don't know. I can't. I can't remember. Your thoughts on this? I think you were like he'll, he's going to be back. I think you're right. Who? Brian. One hundred percent. I think he's going to be in the post credits in a, in eleven, and then, and then he's going to be in twelve. Yeah, because oh, this is a trilogy now. Yeah, yeah. I think that's. I How think are they going to Infinity War? The ending to the next movie. Well, that's a good point. God. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think I think you're absolutely right. They're they're waiting for the the technology is there. Yeah. And I think they're probably going to be like, okay, well, we need to perfect this. Like as much as some of this didn't look right, I think if they're going to put Brian back in, yeah, they're going to probably use his brothers to stand in and then do the face and the voice thing. Yep. They're going to need a couple of years because if it looks even sl- – it, because this guy is – it's not like a Mark Hamill thing. Like Paul he's, Walker is literally he's dead. dead. Yeah. If you do, if you If this looks even slightly flawed, mm. but they need, they have to do it at this point. They've, yep. they've – They've absolutely set it up. I need to give Vin Diesel someone to talk someone to. Someone to talk to, even if it's a robot man. I know he. To- I know he talks to people during this, and he meets like his 
ex girlfriend's sister and all of mm. that. Danielle Melchior, who I like, who uh, who scrubs up quite well when she's not covered in rat droppings. <laughs> I thought <laughs> actually a very attractive woman. What? Uh, yeah, no, I didn't. Right. Yeah, yeah. I only see everybody as family in this, so I'm not attracted to anybody. That's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. God, da- just um. So <laughs> that ending. So yes. Jason Momoa's entire plan. Yes. Was to lure Vin Diesel and his son. Now, okay, but before that, was it to also separate him from his family or something? Yeah. Okay. And he did that, didn't he? He did that quite early on. (laughs) But it's also, it wasn't, he didn't, he didn't separate him from his family in the sense of like, everybody's going, you betrayed me, Dom Toretto or whatever. It wasn't like. No, they just weren't in the same It wasn't like eight or something where they're like, you've gone bad, Dom Toretto. Or like, you've, you've caused us to, you've caused a real split or whatever. They were just in separate places. Yes. He's like success. Yeah. All right. I've done it. Now you you could have just waited till he went down the shops. Would you like to have a street race with me? Mm. A mad genie. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> Genie and and disgusting uh, hag Daniela Melchior <laughs> and that guy from a previous movie because we got to kill someone. Was he in a previous movie? I think he's in one of them. Maybe great. Yeah, I hope he's all right. He wasn't the last guy we saw who was like, "Dom, you're back, and we love you." We and love I'm, race also wars. A, I'm a street race guy. You know, he, he wasn't. Dom, I'm a street race guy. <laughs> you remember me? <laughs> he was, yes, I remember you. I remember you. Um. So yeah, and so he lures him to a to a dam mm-hmm. after he pulls helicopters out of the air and whatever, That's right. et cetera. That's right, and I'm going to destroy you in a way you could never imagine. And I knew you'd Cru- crush you with a couple of trucks. I meant to steal your son from John Cena's car, and then you steal your son back. Mm, that's right. And then you'd get here. All part point. of my plan. That's right. Anyway, so he's got two remote control trucks, and they're mm. coming in. And just before that happens, Alan Alan Rickstrom. He shoots down the plane that's got the, the fun team on it. Yeah. The and fun that, team are in a plane. They're like, we're coming to get you, Dom. And he's also, like, Also, what, what was their plan? Just to fly by? <laughs> yeah. Dom would have figured out the rest. I guess he would yeah. have figured out the rest. He would have driven up the side of the, he would have driven up the <laughs> dam instead of down the dam. And they would have opened the cargo bay and he would have driven his car into the plane and they would have flown off. Yep. Yeah, his indestructible car, which fell out of a plane earlier and landed on two cars and was fine. And they exploded. They exploded. His car was completely fine, which I know was in the trailer, but it's still staggering when it's just like not a scratch. Yeah. Incredible. You forgot one thing. You left him in my car. You shouldn't have left him in my car. That's right. Anyway, drives off the edge of the dam mm-hmm. and he goes down the dam mm-hmm. and you think he's safe and he's yeah. like, I love you, Brian, little mm-hmm. Brian. Well, actually, this was my plan all along. <laughs> I'm a genie and I know the future. So guess what? I put bombs on the dam. So even if you drove down the dam, you'd drive down the dam. Yeah. Because that's what you do. I'm going to blow up the dam, by the way. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if you know that. Yeah, yeah I'm going to blow it up. The end. Mm. Fast and Furious Infinity War. That's right. But not quite the end. Because no. we get we get a we get a final scene. Yeah. And we Wait, also before we do that, I guess. Yes. What a bullshit ending. <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. Like, at least with Infinity War, it built towards, like, yeah. you know, he yeah. wants to do this thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, and then at the end, he did it. Uh-huh, he does sure. it, and it's, like, yeah. devastating. Mm. And half the people are wiped out. Yeah, yeah. They did the same thing where, like, half the people are wiped out because yeah. they all died on that plane, they Mason. They sure did. And Scott Eastwood died when he fell nah, out of that car. No, but you car. know what? Doc, um, Mr. Agent Sunglasses uh, has saved him. I they agree. were in a different plane, I reckon. Prob- They're probably in a virtual plane. Yeah. They were probably flying that plane by remote, but actually they were in a truck. You might be right. You're probably right. It's yeah. something like that. Yeah, yeah. But just the idea in the last two minutes that, like, now I'm going to blow up this dam, and then it ends. Yeah, <laughs> right. <laughs> what the fuck is this? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? I don't know. I don't know. That's that's nothing. Come on, what are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, sorry. Well, I was going to say, so what's interesting, because we get, we get a – Final scene before the credits, and then we get a mid credit sequence. And if your only exposure to the Fast and Furious movies was you watch the movies like a normal person, yeah. I reckon you would think that those scenes should be in the opposite order. But if you know the behind-the-scenes drama, yeah. they're in the correct order. So, like, the the post credit sequence is that Luke Hobbs is back, yeah. right? Which is only significant... Because he's still alive in these movies. It's yeah. only significant if you know that he had a massive falling out with Vin Diesel and you didn't think he'd ever come back and yeah. now he's back. So that's the mid-credits. Yes. But the scene where you thought Giselle died four movies ago but now she's <laughs> back and she's alive and she's a submarine captain now, <laughs> that's a bigger reveal technically, I think. You're absolutely right. But now she's it. back and she's saving the life of, of 
Cypher and Letty. Because she's a submarine. Because she's a submarine <laughs> captain now. And she hasn't <laughs> talked to anybody. Do you think there's there, there cannot be a reveal where she and Han is still in contact? I assume not. He's sad. Because he's, he's been, been sad dating. for several movies. He's 39 and he's single. Yeah. Yeah. No, you're absolutely right. I should point I liked the Michelle Rodriguez, Charlie Theron stuff. Yeah, we didn't mention that at all. They yeah, that's a, adventure, that's a good they? pairing. Yeah, and also, you know what? They clearly do not have rules in their contract. Because they hit each other a lot. They hit each other and there was it, it, it that felt like a real that fight. That was the best fight That was the movie. best fight where they just thump each other for five minutes. Yeah, that was good stuff. The moment where Letty pushes Charlie's Theron through the second floor window and they smash on all the medical equipment. Yeah. What a shot. That's great. Agree. That's in one of the trailers, I think, but it's like, ooh, that hit hard. That hit hard. That hits hard. That hit hard. It hit fast that's and right. furious. That's right. Crossroads, the video game. Great mm. game. Yeah. Oh, by the way, that's up at bigsandwich.co now if you want to watch me play the, mm. the Fast and Furious video game and just have a really good time You're doing it. You're having a good time. <laughs> You're always having a good time. I am always having a good time. Yeah. So, yeah, but the, the Hobbs reveal, what I was talking about last week, because when we mentioned, because they spoiled it. They said yeah. The Rock is in this movie. The rap was, the rap was like, he's in it. Apparently there's been there's been talks for months, but this was shot relatively recently, and mm. it does feel that way. Yes. Hobbs goes into a room and he's like, you're the one who actually shot my no, father. A, a, man, a man who could be anyone goes into a room. A man he's of wearing, a certain size. That's right. An enormous man wearing a, wearing a balaclava. Tactical. Mm. Wearing his famous, wearing his famous gloves. <laughs> yeah, his famous little gloves. He goes in, and they're like, and he's like, "Oh, you're the one who shot my father in the head," which is true. Mm. And he's like, "I'm gonna come and find you." And the Rock takes his mask off, mm. and guess what? It's the Rock. He does have his goatee. He does, doesn't he? It's a little grey. It's a grey goatee, mm. which I appreciate. Because he's older and time. wiser. Yeah. And he goes, "While well, I ain't hard to find, you some bitch." Nice. Is it? Nice. I, did it? Uh, what's what is the character? Is he like a guy who says "some bitch"? Yeah, yeah, I think he is. He doesn't say yeah. "son of a bitch." He you says know, what we're also going to get out of this. I think we're probably going to get Ryan Reynolds in this, and we're going to get um, Rob Delaney in this. Sure, because they're in Hobbs and Shaw. Speaking of Shaw, Hobbs and Shaw, Hobbs and Shaw. Mm. Yeah, maybe they'll even have some people in the same room. <laughs> maybe with each other. Here's a thought I also had. Yeah, how inevitable do you think Fast and Furious Transformers is? You I know, had that thought when, I, the, when the trucks are about to crash yeah. into Vin Diesel. I'm like, oh, what if what if one of these was Optimus Prime? <laughs> you know what? It's interesting. You I mean, say they're that. different. They're different movie studios, but there was a moment when John Cena was being Dom Cena, the character. Sorry, was being yeah. pursued, uh-huh. and he was in his weird jalopy machine with its cannons on the side. Yeah. And I'm like, oh man, I like that John Cena's in this. I really liked him when he was in that other movie in this franchise, Bumblebee. And then I was like, <laughs> I had a moment. I'm like, oh no, this isn't. This isn't the Transformers franchise. This is yeah. This is a different yeah, franchise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I think it's a, maybe just a matter of time before Universal swallows up Paramount or vice versa, <laughs> yeah. and they're just like, you know, yeah, why not? Together, why not? They could all have their own. Letty, Dom Toretto, Optimus Prime. Letty could ride up, op- ride RC. Yep, she's a motorcycle girl. Girls and motorcycles that work together. That's right. The nerds could ride the nerd ones. Han could the. The Asian Transformer. <laughs> yes, that's right. Because there's one. Because there's one. That's yeah, how you got to do it. That's how they would do it. Yeah. The, the hacker would be with Perceptor. Yes. Because he's a big nerd too. Jason Statham is the, there's a British one. There's a British one. Cogman. <laughs> you could have, you could team up with Cogman. <laughs> this is what are you doing, person. Cogman? He could say, <laughs> what, are you blood, what are you bloody like, Cogman? What are you bloody like? <laughs> Cogman, it was out of control. It was out of control. <laughs> Madness. Uh, I guess um, I, 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 I'm not going to say that. Like, I'm not looking forward to the next thing uh-huh. because they're just piling in more and more people, yeah, yeah. and we are barreling towards a Brian yeah. reunion because there's only so many things that can happen, and they just go, "Well, Brian's busy." Yeah, you can't. I felt keep, that. You can't. You're either going to have to. You're going to have to kill him yeah. or you're going to have to bring him back. You're going to have to Brian or get off the pot, you know what <laughs> That's I mean? That's right, exactly. Do a big Brian or get off the pot. <laughs> That's right. I Because they did uh, – initially I thought they weren't going to mention him at all because there's yeah. a t- – towards the start they're just like, yeah, this is happening and this is happening and then in – But then they do the Brian. At the midpoint, Brian's Brian, got the kids and everything's okay or But whatever. then they do the Brian died song. They play the song yeah, and yeah, they yeah. look at photos of Brian. He's That's like, true. man, I wish I had someone to talk to in this <laughs> movie. Right. I wish I hadn't alienated everybody. <laughs> Except that one guy. <laughs> oh, man. Yeah. These are fun. 
I love when they cut to the, the the wedding photo of Letty and Dom, and Dom's wearing like a wife a white wife beater. Like you like don't a, remember that? Like a crisp wife white wife beater. It's in the movie. Yeah, I know. I just think it's funny every time. Not even a button up shirt. No, Not I even know. a tucked in shirt for your wedding. Are you kidding me? Have a sense of occasion, Dom. You you wear one to a funeral, a button up shirt. Yeah, Come right. on. Anyway, we don't have a ton of time, so we should probably. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I just Claire needs the studio. She does. This is from C Ray. Uh, hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. Of course, Dom can outrun a fucking neutron bomb shockwave. Worst movie ever. This is from Mario. The best part of Fast Ten were the seeds they showed clips of Fast Five. The movie was all right, fun, but way too over the place to care for what was going on. Jason Momoa felt like he was uh, he was doing his best Joker impression. Worst movie ever. Alexander says. Just all fast X. Jason Momoa is doing his best Joker and Dom is a physics genius. Entertainment for sure. Pump for the next one. Mark Evs 55 says, just saw Fast 10. Felt like Vin Diesel was out of place in his own movie. Everyone else was quipping the whole time. It was like he was Batman and everyone else was in a Marvel movie. Somehow still greatest movie ever. And Dan says, pro tip, if you're making a vanity project to show off how tough and badass you are, don't hire John Cena, Jason Momoa, and Alan Richson <laughs> to act alongside you. Yeah. They're all bigger and have far more charisma than you. <laughs> Ouch, but yes. No, I think it's good to hire yeah. people who are better than you around you. Yeah. That elevates your performance. Not in this case, but Ooh. often that is the <laughs> – there is something funny about Dom just like muttering and just walking around yeah, by yeah. himself being like, blah, 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 blah. you know? That is just true, a man yeah. losing his mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> One, you know, he shows up for the final – he shows up for the final battle in his indestructible car and everybody else has just sorted everything else out. <laughs> They've just negotiated a surrender. Yeah, we did. Yeah, we did it. It's fine, actually. Don't worry about it. Because even when, because the most scenes he has is with Danielle Melchior. Mm. But even when, like, he's in like a big shootout on the bridge, uh-huh. it, it, oh, I forgot he at one point he uses a car door as a shield. To he does, like, a yeah. bunch of bullets, yes. But even like in those scenarios, he doesn't feel like he's there with anybody else. Yeah, which he probably, which he was. Like, he's got a scene with Brie Larson and stuff yeah, in yeah. this as well. And oh yeah, she's Mr. Sunglasses' daughter. Yeah, that's There's right. There's so many characters we haven't even covered. She's all the little characters. sunglasses. She's little sunglasses. And initially, I'm like, does that mean she's Scott Eastwood's brother? No, they're not related. <laughs> Maybe though. Maybe they are though. Maybe it'll be revealed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, good stuff. Anyways, uh, let's move it along. Isn't that amazing that Brie Larson's just in this? Yeah, it's just like I'll be in this one. Yeah. yeah. I've won an Oscar. Remember the bit where she goes into the bar and she's like, I'm here to see someone, and they're like, we're going to have a big fight. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then, but like, you don't have to come in and be rude. You could just be like, oh, I'm just here to see Dom. She was yes. rude, basically. Yeah, is Dom, is Dom Toretto here? I mean, he's there. He's the bald man in the white beater <laughs> sitting in that. Come on. <laughs> All right, let's move it along. Let's move it along. What's the segment called? It's called What We Reading. Yeah. What We're Going to Read. Wow, two great segments. That's right. I'm doing the theme. have you been reading that's a great question james and the answer is nothing so this week for me it's going to be what i'm gonna read so i brought it in i brought in it's oh the dog's back hey the dog can open the door now the, yeah, the dog right. can open all the doors get smart style to the to the movie studio but you might recognize the movie this studio uh this is what i'm gonna read it's from amal el motar it's a it's a, a short novel called this is how you lose the time war now people might recognize this from twitter because last week uh a man by the username biggolus dickolus recommended this <laughs> Uh, and 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 they were like, um, don't don't look up anything about this. Just you should get it. It's just a good, entertaining kind of sci-fi okay. novel. It's not um, based on the Time War, which is another. No, book. but the the post went viral, and then yeah. the book ended up on a bunch of bestseller lists all of a sudden. So that's the power of Twitter, baby. What's it like? I don't know yet. I haven't read it. I'm going to read that the, too. Okay, you should read it. Uh, but uh, this is from uh, this is from uh, there's a there's a blurb on the back from uh, author Madeline Miller who says this book has it all: treachery and love, lyricism and gritty action, existential crisis and space opera scope. Not to mention time traveling super agents. It's a fireworks display from two very talented storytellers. Oh, there so, you go. So two oh, it's authors. Two authors: Amal El Motar and Max Gladstone. So there you go. Malcolm, a romantic Gladwell. tour through all of time in the multiverse. Sounds like a bit of fun, eh? Multiverse, very, yuck! I'm sick. Yeah, of yeah, we're already. all sick of multiverse. It came out in I think tw- maybe 2019. I remember 2019. It hasn't got a big. It hasn't had a big. Uh, and now it's doing well. It's doing very well. So I'm excited to cool. read that. Well, I watched the movie Rentfield. Oh, Rentfield, hey. Uh, remember that Nicholas Cage's yeah, yeah, Dracula? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's like, I'm a big Dracula, and mm. Nicholas Holt's like, I'm, I'm codependent. I'm on little Dracula. Dracula. I'm little Dracula. Or yeah, whatever. That's right, and it's good. Yeah, it's what a bit you? of fun. Okay, it's great. very gory. Mm, interesting. Um, because we didn't get that at the same time as the US. No. Mm. 
But it's on streaming if you have VPNs, et cetera. Oh, interesting. Very nice. Which is maybe how I watched it, but oh, who's to yeah. say? Oh, yeah. But yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's a bit of fun. Mm. I feel like the premise could have been like all the Nicolas Cage Renfield stuff is really good, but it kind of, it's got a bunch of mob stuff in it. And I don't know whether like that mm. direction that particularly holds up. Is it, the, the Dracula stuff is more interesting than the other stuff. Yeah, is what right, I'm saying. right, right. Yeah. Anyways, let's move it along, Mason. Okay. To yeah, what right. we're reading. Oh, yeah. No, we've done what we're reading. To so what we want to read. Here we go. What? What? Letters. We do yeah, letters. Are you? I'm going to do letters, James, yes. It goes like this. The classic one was letters, oh, letters. We love you. Some letters, they're only a day away. We're going to hear right now. We're going to do letters. People didn't know I got rhythm, but I do. That is so true, yes. If you want to reach the show, hashtag weeklyplanetpod on Twitter or weeklyplanetpod at gmail.com. Oh, yes. Claire's coming in the other room to set up, I can see, for her Oh, podcast. yes, very good. She thinks she's better than us because mm. she talks to real people. That is true. But we're thoughts real. and opinions. We're real. Are we? We're real. Okay, if you say so. Here's an email from Ali. Uh, and he says, extra in Fast and Furious. Oh, my God. So this is a bit of a brag. My wife was an extra in Fast and Furious 6 in the scene in London. Uh, <laughs> her and a load of other girls from the extras agency were told to wear nightclub attire. Once on set, they were all told to line up. The first AD arrived and went down the line stating, hot, hot, not, not, hot, not. Nice. Before another AD went up to them and said, he can't say that. <laughs> he turned and said, okay, everyone I said was hot, you're in group one. Everyone I said not, you're in group two. Carried on down the line going group one, group one, group two. Right, everyone in group two go home, everyone in group one line up. Sounds uh, like his wife made it though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What, uh, <laughs> at which point Justin Lin came out and then hand-selected some extra for the scene. Um, uh, his wife had a great time on set, although she's never watched the movie. That's bizarre. So that's a bit of fun, isn't it? God. I imagine it's not like that anymore. I bet it, it is I sometimes. It might be, yeah. God, yeah, 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 it's yeah. also mean. Why are you being mean? You are right? Yeah. yeah. So beauty is subjective, idiot. That's mm. what I would have said if I was yeah, there. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, I have some tweets here, Mason. Oh, yes. Which you can reach by hashtag Weekly Planet Pod. This is from Stuart Fletcher who says, Sometimes when I quote you or Wikipedia brand of people in my life, I say, my friend said this. Can that be the official approved, officially approved by the podcast? Hi, Claire. Hello, how are you doing? Yeah, well, we're recording a podcast on it. I know, but I have to go around and see what you said. It's not 12 o'clock yet. No, but you said Hurry up! You, you get out of here! <laughs> when I said you get out of here, Mason, she left. Whoa. Did you see that? I did see that, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, just tell people that your friend said it or whatever. Yeah, yeah, we and- do, I do that all the time, <laughs> constantly. I'm constantly doing that. Got another one here from Dan Jones who says, What's your favorite gear up mission uh, slash battle scene for a movie? I personally have a soft spot for the Lost Boys. I got some here. Deadpool, because he gears up and then he leaves all the stuff in the yeah, car. Yeah, yeah, Hot yeah. Hot fuzz. Mm. Fun. Yes. Um, Commando, classic. Mm. The Matrix, when all the guns Terrific. go whiz. That's my, that might be actually my favorite. Yeah. Uh, probably The Evil Dead, when Ash puts the, 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 yeah, the thing yeah, on his yeah, arm yeah, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, nice. yeah, so we can't dedicate time to this because somebody came in and started yelling. <laughs> you want any more, Mason? Because I've got one more here. Why are you doing that? This is from Stu. He says, I aggressively disregarded your Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 advice and took my four-year-old to watch it. He was fine with all the violence, gore, and the sad animal stuff, but was concerned by how mean Gamora was to Quill throughout. He just ships them so hard. You need to explain to your son that this Gamora does not owe Peter Quill anything. That is so She's true. She's from a different dimension. That's right. And has a different experience. They may as well be strangers. <laughs> That's right. Here's an email from... Uh, I, could appre- I could appreciate yeah. that, though. Here's Thank an email from you. Max, the Virginia-Maryland debate. Hi, James and Meso. A few years ago, I moved to Washington, D.C., which is sandwiched between Maryland and Virginia. I can confidently say they're all bad drivers and they wish they had even more of our sweetest heck metro system. Whoa. Also, D.C. has a better flag than either. Now, we got a lot of... We, we opened up a real can of worms with Virginia and Maryland. I've got a lot of emails. I'll save for next week. Okay, um, cool. But, uh, but boy, howdy. Oh, people this flag's are, all right, I guess. People are mad. <laughs> people are real mad. I, I assume Virginia and Maryland are next to each other, but maybe they're not. Maybe they're not. Maybe they're other sides of the country. I don't know. Who's to say? Mason, please wrap up the show. Folks, thank you so much for listening to the pod. We absolutely appreciate it. If, if you want to get into contact with us, you can go to weeklyplanetpod at uh, gmail.com, at Facebook, at Twitter, at Bandcamp. You can go to the Planet Broadcasting, Redmates Facebook group. You can go to the Weekly Planet Pod subreddit and Discord. Uh, you can follow us on the various socials. They're all li- linked in the, in the episode. 
episode description yep, yep, yep. you want to follow us there uh, folks uh, if you want to support the show you can go to patreon.com slash Mr. Sunday Movies if you want to chuck in a bucket amount you wouldn't miss or you can go to bigsandwich.co if you're a big time billionaire and you can go there and for nine US dollars per month you get bonus podcasts movie commentaries uh, let's plays video games and all sorts of stuff it's a great old time uh, thank you to the boot and the basilisk and rack and for all the musical themes and also uh, if you want some t-shirts you go to tpublic.com next week different thing yeah, uh, I can't remember what it is, but it is something. That's Little right. Mermaid. We're going to get Claire on. Myrtle Mermaid. Myrtle Mermaid. Okay, Arts quickly, you can review the show. You can do it in app. This one's from Big from CRV1138. Five stars says, big compliment. Compliment. And this one's from Randall Slayton who says, you guys should also do a car podcast. Thank you. And also a big <laughs> thank you to Sarabi, Fidel, and Maisie who are not only – uh, looking after the Great Mates group, but there are also various other social medias and editing and, they and do all those other job. things. Thank you so much. See you guys next week. Um, make sure you go out and see The Little Mermaid on the biggest screen you can. That's right. Your phone. <laughs> Your phone. Thanks, everyone. Grab that, Jimmy, guys. We'll see you next week. Bye. I don't have diarrhea. <laughs> Put that on a T-shirt. <laughs>